Kiss me live, bitches! Coming soon to this theater. Everybody, it's your boy Brian back for another episode of Horror Movie Club, the club where what do we do? We talk about horror movies, we watch them and then we talk about them. Uh, every week we pick a movie that's always not behind a paywall, so the link to the movie is down below in the description where you can watch it for free. Uh, it's usually a link to uh, Tubi or Plex or one of these other sites that show films uh, unedited, right? So all the gore and boobies and beasts and everything. Every you know is uh, is in there. Uh, there's usually uh, commercials, but not too many of them. Uh, but yeah, so that way you, you know when we're talking about the movie, well beforehand, if you want to check the movie out and then join us in the discussion in the chat, that's cool. But also, if you haven't seen tonight's movie and from listening to us talk about it, you think to yourself, "Damn, I need to check that out." Link is below in the description where you can watch it for free. Anyway. Uh, tonight we got a special show. Uh, we're talking about Adam Green's Hatchet, and we have Andrew Mangum on, who is the artist on the uh, Hatchet comic book. And also, uh, I've discovered a bunch of other uh, uh, like uh, uh, horror comics based on the uh, on the Full Moon um, Puppet Master series. Now, I'd be lying if I said I was uh, originally uh, familiar with andrew's work before uh being introduced to him by pops but i'm ready to get into a deep dive with this guy because i love everything i'm seeing and i think you're gonna love everything that you're gonna see from this guy too especially if you're a horror fan especially if you're a gore hound uh but first of all let me bring on my boy your boy matt butch cleaver burke what's going on brother you know brother just did a show with um lucifer lucifer storm we were talking as a ed gein book um so nice. that's, that's what i was doing in the past you know few hours so what's up man what's going on not much brother not much uh i re- man i gotta read that book pops keeps talking yeah. about how dope it is i haven't read it yet i told him my back did i haven't read it but i want to get the other three and four before i do a deep dive on it review and stuff so. right 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 very cool very cool and then of course we got my man pops what up pops Yeah, I'm just gonna let him talk for a while. While, <laughs> you, while he's got his ass <laughs> muted. <laughs> oh, dude, do you have any idea how many? Okay, times... now that I got all the cussing out of the way, <laughs> you know why I'm here. Yeah, I'm here man. to have fun, hang out with my friends, look at look at horror movies, and talk to our friend, my longtime friend from long before I had a show or any of this dumb shit. My friend Andrew Mangum and his son Gabriel's hanging out with him too, and Look, these guys are top notch on the art game, so yeah, you're, you you're going to want to check this out. Most definitely, Andrew. Thank you what's so much for joining up, us, sir. Thank you for having me, guys. How are y'all? And also Gabriel, who's like off camera, just there, off camera. <laughs> there he is. There he is. <laughs> he's 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 gonna be, he's he's in the uh, in the co-pilot position tonight. Yeah, so. on standby. Yeah, most, <laughs> most definitely. Uh, fellas, thank you so much for joining us. We really do appreciate it. And uh, yeah, tonight we are going to be talking uh, some horror movies. And of course, another thing, if you love horror movies and you're a comic book nerd, guess what? You know you love some horror comics. Oh, yeah. Yes. Right? Exactly. And uh, my goodness, man, this is actually a pretty good time for uh, for horror comics. 
I've been seeing uh, a lot of stuff coming out that's really good. Uh, Ebon Press is oh. doing killer stuff. Uh, mm-hmm. Their books tend to be on the expensive side, but you know you kind of get what you pay for. Yeah. Uh, Andrew, do dude, you want to? Uh, uh, as far as their books, dude, I'd love to get a hold of them just for the Kyle Holtz covers. Oh. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, we, uh, he's in yeah. my top three. <laughs> <laughs> Kyle, like, Kyle's a good friend, and I love his work. He, he everything he does, I try to get my hands on. Oh my god! Right, look, this this is yeah, what yeah. I want to yeah. set the stage. Stands. Let let me set the stage real quick for you guys. Then I want to get out the way and let you guys talk because okay. I've talked to Andrew lots of times. You guys haven't, okay? Yeah. So I met Andrew back in like 2017, I think it was, and I had ordered a book from him or. or you know, um, bought a book from him, this hatchet book right here. And he took it around to all the people who were beheaded in the book and get them all to sign it too. So there were like <laughs> signatures all over it. Right. Nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he sent it to me with some bonus stuff. And I was like, dude, you can't do that. You can't send me extra stuff. So I sent him some money, right. Some extra money. Cause he sent me extra stuff. So then he sent me more extra stuff. Dude wouldn't (laughs) let me get ahead of the game, right? He wouldn't let me pay him. I I knew if I sent him more money, he'd just go send me more stuff, right? It's (laughs) it's all about, Pops, it's all about being respectful of people that give a shit about your work. I mean, too many many creators, I've been doing this for 21 years now, too many creators treat their fans like shit, and they charge for autographs, and they act like they're high and mighty, and they act like they're fucking rock stars when really you're not. Uh, you make a fucking funny book, so get over yourself. So be <laughs> grateful for anybody that that wants to spend their hard-earned money on you, whether it be five dollars or twenty dollars or more. You know, treat fans the way you want to be treated. So you were being super respectful with me and always support me, and so I wanted to give you something back. And and look at this, guys. Ah, oh, nice. look at that. That's fucking. Those are just sketches. Those are horrible. Dude, that's is that badass or what? Come on, come Don't on, pay off, dude. Oh, yeah. And it was like you know, extra comics. Dude just kept sending me stuff. He wouldn't let me get ahead of the game on him. <laughs> well, so that's the, the thing, only Pops. way I can get ahead is to promote the heck out of him. Right? There it is. That's that's the only way I can do it. So this was just another way. I was like, let's do Hatchet. Let's bring Andrew Gabriel out. And not only that, but they're involved in this other thing and i figure before we get into hatchet let's go ahead and and talk about this other thing that him and andrew that him and uh gabriel got into with our friend Hart. nice you know what i'm talking about it's a big freaking book of dahmer oh yeah oh yeah (laughs) all right guys we need you to go back this collected cover, this cover. It's, uh, Gabriel and I did our, our first, very first jam cover together. So Gabriel came in and drew Dahmer there, getting his ass kicked and torn apart by Hart. <laughs> up in him. So I drew Hart giving the middle finger to Dahmer and just covered in guts and in gore. <laughs> and came in and drew, uh, That's metal. And drew uh, <laughs> Dahmer there. So I drew Dahmer getting his goddamn jaw ripped off because if that's oh, not justice, oh. I don't know what it is. Oh, <laughs> oh, that's metal. That's metal as fuck right there. Yeah, it is. Just go and order this it, cover, dude. That's all. And, right. we, and we brought in a, a veteran colorist, a buddy of ours, Dave Kemp, who's colored Spawn and tons of books yep. for Marvel and DC and. And he's coloring some stuff for Gabriel and I, and he colored one of my Ernie covers. And and so oh. we need to go back this. Uh, it's yeah, limited man. to 50. There, there's dope, six dude. days left, you guys. It's not quite a 50%. Dude. Look, Hart's been around for a long time. He's contributed a lot to this industry, not just the comic industry, but to horror movies, yep. to ev- everything, man. Come on, y'all. Go get like, so hard. Hey, part of the reason, like, I yeah, volunteered, man. like, I asked Hart if I could do this. And the first reason was to pay respect for a guy that fucking went on Jerry Springer and all that bullshit back in the day. Yeah. And fucking he, yeah. he fought fucking for, for our freedom to do the stories we want to do. He dealt with people fucking real death threats. He had people marching outside his house. He's you know, the only person that is ever, he, he's the you only know? person that ever beat Marvel in a courtroom. Yeah. yeah. I mean, dude, not to mention, I'm a fucking huge fan of his work he did at Chaos. I loved his uh yeah. his uh Dead King story he did. With uh, with David Brewer and Roy Young, so I'm a big fan. Yeah, he. I mean, come on, 
you guys get behind this, back this book for, you know, just out of respect for, for dude's body of work. Dude, yep. you know, like, like uh, I'm just like gobsmacked. I'm like, Andrew, how have we not met you before? How are <laughs> right? you not already like part of the scene? <laughs> He's you been like a long lost the cousin, whole time, dude. Me. <laughs> I'm, dude, I you can ask Gabriel here. I'm very low tech, and I know that hurts me, but I, I just I, I'm more of a. I don't do a lot of shows anymore. I sit at my table and I draw. Uh, I was, you know, blessed to know Bernie Wrightson, and Bernie told me Aww. something great, and it was, "Hey, you need to sit at the table and you need to draw." And I know you need to promote and you need to go online and all that good stuff. It's a different day and age now, but you know, dude, I just I, I'm here to push my kid now. Gabriel's going to be 22 in a week or so. And, and he's a oh, badass been in this industry for 10 years now. And, you know, I've, I've had my time. I want to push my kid now, you know what I mean? So I just want to draw cool shit and be quiet and make cool shit. You know what I mean? Yeah, man. Yeah, man. Like our friend Preston, for instance, who you definitely, if you haven't met, I, uh, you guys are going to get along famously. Uh, he's one of those guys that doesn't really hang out that much anymore. Cause he's just like head down and just like, <laughs> work 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 because unfortunately in the crowdfunding scene a lot of it is hustle 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 and then it gets to a certain point where you're just mm -hmm. like wait i'm doing like 80 percent hustle 90 percent hustle and like 10 percent work you know it doesn't like the math yep. doesn't doesn't work doesn't work out well y'all are gonna see me and gabriel a lot more online uh we're launching our own imprint so everybody else has done their own creator on stuff I've been telling everybody else's stories for 21 years and drawing covers for everybody else. I'm kind of sick of it. So, <laughs> what can you I'm, tell me about this do. one, Gabriel? What, Man, what you, I don't even have that in hand. I'll say that first. Oh, look at that. Oh, look at that. Oh, nice. <laughs> Gabriel yeah, did that this one, Brian. Brian. on that. That's is that a gorilla or is that a Sam Squamsh? Ah, that's a big ass gorilla, man. Oh, you could draw the shit out of a gorilla, dude. dude yeah, dude. dude. Don't fuck with Harambe there. <laughs> hey, I, I, I'm, I'm seeing a cover from Gabriel for Six Gun, right? <laughs> oh, happen, oh, my dude. God. Oh, my God. I'd it be psyched for that. I would be psyched for All that. You got to do is hit me up, brother. I'm open. Oh, hell yeah, dude. Oh, hell yeah. Hell yeah. So, my everybody. is done. Y'all, you're on your own. <laughs> Thanks, Pops. You're the best, brother. That's, that's, yeah, that's, by that's all why means, we love you, you guys, dude. Um, Get to know each other a little bit. I'm gonna try to stay the hell out of the conversation. Uh, this this is like match made in heaven. You guys all here at one place at the same time. So yeah, no shit. I'm gonna shut up. Now, if uh, pops, if you could if you could drop me the uh, link of the private chat for this campaign, so I can. Uh, well, first of all, uh, do, should we take a look at the trailer because uh, mm. you know, yeah. If there's yeah, of course. Yeah, I would say so. <laughs> okay. All right. Let's see. All right. Because I think it's like, am I in control? Is Pops in control? I think Pops is in control. <laughs> I, I can just play it, bro. Hold on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Blow that. Wait, there we go. <laughs> Blow that shit up. Is that Kim Newman? I don't know how they fucking talked me into this, but I grabbed this goddamn shirt out of a box in my mom's fucking attic, and <laughs> Jesus Christ, I look like a sausage link. <laughs> in the underground lair of an upstart publisher, the saga of Jeffrey Dahmer unfolds in the pages of a not-so-comic book. It's something you can't get anywhere else. I mean, uh, you like the truth, you like something a little different, uh, something a little bit more uh, fresh, a little bit more bloody. Outraged families of Dahmer's victims have successfully sued to block further publication of the strip. And we find that this book written by Mr. Hart Fisher. We might find what he publishes absolutely repugnant, but here in America, you're allowed to publish and print whatever you want. We have all kinds of books about all kinds of murderers. We have movies about Adolf Hitler. What right does a group have to go and try and ban the publication? Art Fisher is being sued by family members of Dahmer's victims for using their names and likenesses in his comics. But Fisher says his real concern is with the family's determination to have the comics banned. 
basically the only reason they're here is so you can profit directly on their pain live while it happens right here. No, no, That's the only no, reason they're here. Problem, you brought them here for one reason. She's not profiting. I'm not profiting anything. She's making thousands and thousands of dollars by you crying on TV, suffering on TV. I did a comic book well, about a you killer. You must know that I'm not crying on TV. You, you must know, know that I work for a comic book. That we do not yeah, like a your company. comic book. The whole talk show industry is based on festering wounds. You take people, you exploit them right there. Truth. Uh, did you try to sue over this? Yes, I did. Yeah, and, and I lost through the First Amendment. Amendment and I've had that up to here, too. Uh, if it does bother her heart, what's the problem with <laughs> apologizing? Well, the problem is this. Why don't you go out and create your own product? And write a book on what it's like to be a black called a Caucasian who becomes a victim? <laughs> Something like that. <laughs> I've been through a lot on the south side of Chicago. So when it came time to do my own comic book company, well, Boneyard Press was about that primal scream for life in the face of death. I remember sitting in my father's kitchen. We were having breakfast. Uh, he lived in Country Club Hills. And, <laughs> and he's, he's as a, so this company you're doing is Boneyard Press, huh? Yeah, Dad. Uh, yeah, it's the Boneyard Creek in Champaign, right? It's the Boneyard Creek. And I'm like, no, Dad, it means my back is against my grave and I'm going forward or I'm going to die. I'm going forward or I'm going to die. That's where I'm coming from. This is what I'm doing. If I don't succeed, I'm going to tumble into my own goddamn <laughs> grave. So I'm going to go over everything and everyone in front of me. Boneyard Press, Fuck their yeah. titles include Dark Angel, Bill the Bull, Outlaw Nation, Jeffrey Dahmer, The Unauthorized Biography, Kill Image, Kill Marvel. Uh, he's no stranger to controversy. Hero Illustrated called him Kill the most dangerous man in comics. Welcome to Cartoon Escape Babe, Art D. Fisher. This fucking thing's a large. I mean, this thing's tighter than the last one. You guys think this looks better? Yeah, yeah it doesn't show as good. much. It's yeah. black. You guys are high. It's a large. It's slimming. What do you mean slimming? <laughs> it's slimming. You don't look sausagey. All right, you fuckers. Let's roll this. <laughs> it looks like me in a shirt. Yeah, yeah, dude. When like, I mean, I should be, I should be rocking my Butch Cleaver T-shirt. And I was like, <laughs> Matt's like, I want to send you a shirt. I'm just like, <laughs> I'm like, like extra, extra large. He's like, Nah, man. <laughs> I got an extra large, but I lost the weight, so I managed to squeeze into it without looking like a jackass. But yeah, man. Uh, my goodness, okay. he has been <clears throat> for a long time. And yep. now, now, is this his first time in, uh, going into crowdfunding? No, I believe he did a Bill the Bull on about a year ago, and that was his first foray back into comics, and he went on to a couple shows and promoted that. That character looks badass, too, Bill the Bull. Uh, yeah. yeah. Hey, hey y'all talked about, talk about Kyle Holtz. There's a Kyle Holtz cover on Bill the Bull, too. Is there really? Yeah. Like, understand, like, we are Kyle Holtz, like, stands. To the max, yeah. like we see him as like kind of like the modern successor to, uh, really to Bernie, but it's like it yeah. seems like every you know like how every high fantasy artist how they're like reaching for for Zeta. I feel like every horror artist is like reaching for Bernie. Carissa, you got to get this cover. You got to get this cover. Yeah, got to get that yeah. cover. <laughs> and I, I actually That's have a little like, money in my account. I can actually I, I can actually back this. You guys want to see something very special and close to my heart? Absolutely, dude. Let's see. Oh, nice. what? That's Kyle's cover for uh, Mosaic number one. Oh, Damn. Badass. oh, original art, dude. Oh, so jealous. Oh, my God. Yeah. Oh, dude, dude, dude. Oh, that is. Oh! <laughs> that's right beside me. 
Oh, that's awesome, dude. And See, now I, he's got I, that I, beside him. And look, right over here beside me, you will see that, oh, gee, there's Hatchet right there on the wall behind, beside oh, right That's there. amazing, dude. I can reach out and touch well, it. It's right there. Well, I'll tell you something about, that, about, about Kyle's work right there, guys. Um, I, other than Kyle, I'm the only person that owns any artwork from his creator on Book Mosaic. Which totally warms my heart. Wow. Um, oh, holy person! I'm a, I'm a I'm a cancer survivor. Okay, and in 2009, I, I battled testicular cancer, and there were quite a few. I went through five months of chemotherapy. Like every round was a week long at a at a time, oh. and um, I would bring comics to Texas Oncology to to you know for the each you know seven to eight hour day of uh, getting all that shit pumped into me. And oh. Kyle's trade paperback for Mosaic was one of the books that I would always bring with me. And I would just get lost in his work and it would help take my mind off the pain I was in for five months. Uh, mm -hmm. And so I'm emotionally attached to his work. Uh, and Kyle being a, a good friend of mine, I, I've expressed my emotions towards his work and he was just, you know, floored by it, which it, it amazed me that, that he has such a heart for his fans and I met him at a show. He came down to Texas and he pulls that cover out for me. And he's like, here. And I thought he was just showing it to me. And he's like, here. And I, you can't really say it real well, but he signed it on the bottom to me. And I do, I start crying. And he's like, dude, don't cry. And I, I had to because artwork, you know, is an emotional attachment. I mean, I grew up, you know, not knowing how to read or write real well. And I was one of the poor, you know, sloppy kids and, and you know, couldn't read and so comic books on my artwork was my outlet to to prove everybody that i'm something and my artwork is part of my escape from the reality that we're in so to have a gift like what kyle gave me is tremendous and close to my heart so that pops is one of the reasons why i do what i do and i did what i did with you with original artwork to you you know what i mean Totally caught me by supply by surprise, blew me away, and it came with a little note, and it says, "This is a cool extra that may see print." Thanks for liking my work, Andrew. So Which not just did see print. So <laughs> not just so not just like talent, talented at the yin yang, but also just a genuinely good dude. Dude, yeah. yeah. I mean, look, I didn't Maybe. have no promotional network well, then. I wasn't. I I didn't have shield shows and i didn't come out and promote people i showed off stuff that i got okay if i well, want to be careful saying that because my, my son and i have been accused by uh being nice to fans as a gimmick so we actually got into it with somebody on one of the little groups on facebook and oh. this guy told gabriel that you and your dad are nice to fans and that's a gimmick i'm like Fucking no! We treat people the way we want to be treated. It's, exactly. it's kind of a golden rule kind of thing. Holy yeah. shit, dude! That's, That's just—I mean, well, people like that are just emotionally deformed. Do you know what I'm saying? <laughs> They just, yeah. they like, they it can't, they see somebody, well, that's the thing. People who are scumbags, they look at people who are cool and they think, uh, deep down inside that person is just as rotten as I am. It's a, <laughs> it's a, it's a, it's a gimmick. Oh, I can be an ass. You know, I'll well, admit no, that. You, you, can know? Flip, you can flip, you can flip my bitch switch. You know, <laughs> everybody has one, right? You can, you know, I have a very, very, very long fuse, but it's attached to like a gigantic bomb. I, I've definitely gotten more mouthy as the older I've gotten in the years. You know what I mean? Yeah, exactly. Man. It's like the yeah, you give like, fewer... we get, the less we care, right? <laughs> yeah, the, the fewer fucks we give, the fewer fucks yeah. we give. That's one of the that's one of the things I like about growing older. Everybody always just like complains about getting older. It's just like I actually like I feel more comfortable in my skin and everything, and and you kind of realize what's important and what's not. And, you know, as for like, you know, how, I mean, I've seen how, how some people treat their fans and, you know, and there's like, you know, having a, a tabled maybe like only four or five conventions in my life, uh, you know, you pay attention to like how people treat, treat their fans. And I just remember, you know, the people who are dicks, you remember that, but then also you remember who the people are, all, the, the, who the awesome people are. Right, and you pay attention to them, and you and you and you take notes, you know. Because also another thing is, you, at, at a convention, you want to be the fun table. Yeah, yeah. Uh, 
I, I right. got to give a shout out to our girl, Carissa. She is the creator of Worthy Chaos, which is, she's one of us. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> hey, drop, drop the link for her, for her book too, because that's the thing. As much as this is a stream about horror movies, I also want to tie it into uh, promoting people's books, especially if we can promote people's horror <laughs> Right, like one of the things I like to do is somebody, somebody's doing like uh, Clint Stoker was doing a was doing a Dracula book, so you know we did a Dracula movie, and turns out you got you're the artist on the Hatchet comic, and so <laughs> that's where that's why we're doing uh where we're doing Hatchet tonight. Although that's been on the list for a while, like Homeboy uh, Matt has been uh, has been wanting that for uh, for ages. But, yeah, the Hatchet uh, movies are a lot of fun. Yeah, I, I think so. was the whole thing when they brought it up. I was like, "Well, damn! I know, I know, you know. I can. I'm pretty sure I can get Andrew to come out." <laughs> I know that's awesome, dude. Pops, thank you because because yeah. Andrew, dude, I just like I just met you, and I could tell like, oh, this dude's one of us. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you're gonna find you're gonna find a lot of uh, like minded uh, individuals uh, over here. And oh man, I gotta set you up with Preston, man. You and Preston would hit it off like uh, like crazy too. Uh, but yeah, dude. Uh, so do we really we really should quickly should go over the tiers? I'm thinking just looking at this. I'm thinking this is the one that I want. Yeah, that's that's we get. <laughs> again, guys. That's, that's Gabriel and I's <laughs> very first cover together. Amazing, amazing. Father Son team first collaboration, right there. So first oh, that one's a that one's framed up on the wall, probably. Bravo, yeah. bravo <laughs> gentlemen. Bravo! Yeah, no, that's that's badass right there. It's so fuck you. It's all in Gabriel's art, drawing Dahmer and the coloring, not my shit right there that I drew. <laughs> yeah, you know, I mean, I you know, if we're gonna have a guest and it's not somebody that that I'm that that, that I know personally, uh, I'm always trying to be, you know, I want to be kind and respectful and uh, polite and. You know, but I was like, I, but dude, watch the F bombs tonight. Watch the watch the F bombs, and I'm just like, with, with this dude, yeah, no, something tells me whoever drew this is pretty damn chill. Yeah, it's just badass. It really yeah, it is. is. Yeah, it is. Yeah, yeah you well, can ask Gabriel. The only time I tell him to shut the fuck up is whenever there's like young children around, and he's like, Dad, you cuss around me all the time. I'm like, Yeah, but not when there's fucking little kids around or old people. You know? Ah, yeah. fuck that. We're at least on YouTube right now. <laughs> Drop them. Drop the bombs. That'll <laughs> As we were saying, you get older, fewer and fewer fucks given. Yeah. Yeah, yeah man. So, um, yeah, uh, <coughs> folks, definitely go check this, check this out. We will definitely be promoting this uh, again uh, throughout the there's, evening. There's six days left on this, you guys. Six days left. He needs oh, another, so we need to push you know, almost $1,300. So we need to work this one a little bit. Um, we will make that happen. Name. We will you make know, that happen. Share them links out. Do do everybody a favor, especially hit the horror groups, places, you know, the serial killer groups, the places <laughs> where this is true crime be. pops. The true, true crime, crime man. Called. You gotta get the, the true crime groups. Right. Right. I don't true I don't think that they like being thought of as like serial killer fans, but but it, it is what it is. So I mean like, it is I what mean, it is. Look at all the moms that stay home and watch it during the day, they're hey. watching true crime. You know? I wasn't well, a like, Dean fan until he became a demon hunter. Okay. Well, I I had somebody say, "Hey, dude, I really don't think I'm going to back that cover because I don't want to glorify a serial killer." I go, "But, dude, you got comics that have World War II storylines and Thank Hitler's you. in them. Thank you, you. You're you're buying a book that's glorifying a a fucking mass murder right there. <laughs> Fuck. You know I, mean? I know, like eight, like fifty fifty million people. Uh, yeah, look, I mean, shit. statistically, look. it's definitely going to be. What you were saying before about being in the hospital going through chemo, which I've never experienced, but my father had pancreatic cancer. We all know somebody that's been through chemo and and that that shit is severe, right? Yes. And it's and it's a bad bad time. Like I have one friend that you know, God 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 God, God bless him. I lost a, a couple of years ago who had been through chemo and it was like I'm not doing that shit again. And was just like yeah, and just decided to uh, you know let the can't let the cancer run run, it, run run its course. That's how bad chemo is. And you had that Kyle Holtz book, and while you were reading it, it alleviated your pain. Yep, that is Most, what art is for, dude. His book Mosaic, his work is beautiful, but his work, his book Mosaic, 
uh, is absolutely astonishingly beautiful. Uh, wow. He wrote and illustrated it. All of you need to go pick it up somewhere. Most definitely. Uh, that's yeah. No, I mean, I, I don't have it. And uh, I, I promise you, it. I'm writing that shit down. Yeah, look, get look up, <laughs> go get mosaic. OK, go find it on eBay. I swear to you, it's like a six issue miniseries, I believe. Or there's trade paperbacks out there. It is one of the best books he's ever done. He drew it right around the time he was doing uh, Evil Ernie Destroyer Chaos. Uh, so the man was was drawing one book and and writing and illustrating another book at the same time. It's beautiful. It It is his epic masterpiece, I think. Oh, my so, God. How do I not? How do I not already have that? I feel lame look, for not having that. Look it up. I prom. I and if you if you get it and you don't like it and you think it actually sucks and you do a live stream video bashing it, uh, how much it's garbage? I'll do you a free sketch. Because just mail it. Because I'm you. telling you, I I, I won't end up doing you a free sketch because the book's so fucking awesome. Dude. Yeah, that's where I'm going with that. That's a, yeah. that's a, that's a gangster but, move right there. That's but a gangster if you don't move. like it, just put it in a in a in a Gemini and, and put my little address on there. Ship it right cool. on off to pops because I like it. I promise. <laughs> you don't got to sell me. Man, he's like in my gangsta. he's like in my top three favorite artists of all time. Yep, yeah, it is a spectacular book. Most definitely. I never even I I just had the Billy the Kid stuff from from back. That's how I discovered him. Um, yeah, Kyle actually audience. did a uh, Kyle actually did the alternate cover for uh, a creator on book I did uh, called Wilder uh, with nice. Mark Kidwell, the writer of uh, 68 from Image Comics. Uh, it's a werewolf story about an American GI in World War II that uh, becomes a werewolf and he follows uh, this other werewolf uh, through all the different water wars like Desert Storm and Korean War and Vietnam and whatnot. Uh, oh, so man. Kyle did an alternate cover to that book for uh, for Mark Kidwell and I. Oh man, oh that sounds dope. What, what, what's the name of that again? Wilder. 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 Okay. Yeah, and it's right. Uh, publisher called Monsterverse. Ooh, Carrie yeah. Gamble's company, yeah. Monsterverse, put it out. Oh, nice. Bri Brian's writing that shit down. <laughs> <laughs> no, I do, I do, because. You know, if there's something that's that, that's out there that's the that people tell me that it's dope, I want to check it out. And uh, especially if it's like Kyle Holtz, you know. And that's the thing is, since I disconnected from like the mainstream comic scene, uh, uh, I there's a lot of shit that I've missed, right? Because like yeah. the LCS is, you know, my LCS doesn't even sell comic books anymore, right? Which breaks my heart, but you know, it is what it is. Uh, you know, who the hell wants to read fucking modern uh, mainstream comics, even like sort of like the bigger independents? Who wants to read that shit? You know, uh, something like this, this could never get published today. There's no freaking way. Nobody would touch this. You know, yeah. it's like crowd uh, crowdfunding is uh, is the uh, is the way to go, man, without a freaking doubt. And so yeah, all of you guys, please uh, back Gabriel and I's very first uh, collaborative cover there for Hart Fisher's uh, Big Book of Dahmer. So again, do it because you love Gabriel and I's work together. Do it because we're father and son. Do it because you're paying respect to Hart Fisher, a man that, that fucking paved the way for all of us and, and fucking stood his ground against fucking hippies shit. that didn't want him to tell the stories that he wanted to say. You know, uh, he's one of the guys that paved the way for us. So we just need to, you know, this to, is to show some support. Well, this yeah. is one of the things I wanted to say about Hart. Um, Hart's being, you guys talk about being shadow banned on Indiegogo. Oh, shit. Hart is being blacked out by all of mainstream media. I'm, well, by I'm shocked. Everybody. Yeah, no everybody. shit, Pops. Look, I mean, this like. This guy went through all the talk show all the talk shows back in the day over this and now that the netflix thing come out and they ruined his cover they changed the cover of his book when on Shit. on the on the netflix show okay they put their actor on hart's cover like it's that like that's what the comic was and it, it, that's not what the comic was okay right. Right, um, right, they right. misrepresented hart and then it's like nobody will talk to him about it. Nobody, except us. 
We're the only fucking outlet he's got to get seen. So we got to work like 10 times as hard. Dude, dude, we can do that. We can do that. Uh, There's no way that this book isn't getting funded. Uh, You know, um, and, and, you know, uh, uh, have you have you? Oh, I mean, we'll talk. We'll you know, we'll, we'll, we, we could we could talk later about like, you know, hitting the other streams and everything mm-hmm. like that. Uh, but yeah, uh, you're talking to backer number 14 here, folks. Thank you. You got it, man. Nice. Look, uh, <clears throat> look, uh, uh, you know, I keeps it real. Uh, I don't back something unless it looks like something that like I kind of have to have. Do you know what I'm saying? Uh, yeah. So don't... I think you're backer number 15. <laughs> Am I? Am I? Yeah. Uh, uh, let's refresh. Let's see if uh, we got any backers during this. Yeah. People, come on. It's this there. looks absolutely freaking amazing. It is definitely there now. I see it went up $65 in one backer. Yes, indeed. Thank you oh, very yeah. much, Brian. Appreciate it. Thank you, you guys. Oh, yeah, no, Thank no, you. No worries. No worries. Just, you know, uh, like I said, if, 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 it, if it's something that, uh, that I'm not into, I, I don't, uh, I, I don't, I do not, I do not back it. Um, Let's take a real quick look at the trailer for uh, for um, tonight's movie, Hatchet. By the way, folks, uh, if you if you if you haven't seen this, this is like a movie by uh, Adam Green from two thousand and six. It was the last movie that was shot in Louisiana, actually, uh, right before uh, Hurricane Katrina. Damn. And it's not so. Mu- I wouldn't say it's so. Mu- it- Matt, would you agree with me when I say that? This is, I don't know. It's, I, I don't know if I would call it a satire of a horror movie. I would right? say it's more of a homage to the uh, classic American horror slasher. Right, right. Because I remember like the, the, uh, the tagline was like old school American horror. Yeah, and I'm like, definitely. This is, this isn't old school. It's retro. Yeah. Right? It's, it's, it's its own, and then it, and then it became its own thing. You know what I mean? As far yes. as I'm concerned. Um, and yes. he, he's up there with, with, with the he's up there with freddie jason i like him you know to be i like him maybe even more than freddie and jason you know i mean he gets skipped over a lot but he's modern he's a modern slasher you know like um uh yeah man he's just so cool i love i love victor crowley there's a really dope action figure of him out right now i just like uh saw it at like the local target the other day uh one of the things that's one of the things that's cool is um um you know he comes with accessories and one of them belt sander Oh yeah, from this one, right? Because that, yeah, the case, yeah. I mean, that's one of my favorite parts of this movie. I know we're jumping ahead ahead here, but when he when he comes out and like the engine on that thing is roaring, and you're thinking yeah. like, oh, a chainsaw. It's like, no, no, Sander, <laughs> <laughs> got something special for you. Got some this kind of special something something for you. So anyway, folks, let's take a quick look at the trailer. Uh, as you know, uh, as I always say, we have to like stop them periodically so we don't get yanked off the uh, off the air, which is stupid because it's a trailer, which means it's a commercial, right? For uh, the interested parties. But let's just take a quick look at that. What? My browser won't let me. Wait, hold on a sec. Do 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 do. I remember when this movie came out, they had it at Best Buy. My, my, my buddy, he, he, he got the special edition. At the time, I couldn't pick it up. And it came with the little hatchet keychain. Oh. And he would always he would always dangle that keychain over my head because I could never. And I still haven't bought the first one, right? I, I bought the second one. Oh, well. Uh, second one's my favorite. But I love this one almost just as much. Um, first first of all, we, we got to take a look at, like, some oh, of yeah, the... Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Some of the art, because like one of the things we always do on this stream is, you know, I always do a Google and yeah. look for movie posters, fan arts, you know, anything that's related, yeah. especially if it's something that's comic book related to the uh, to, to the uh, to the to the night's movie. By the way, that's not a hatchet. It's an axe. Right. Right. But that's picking. That's that's me just being a dick for pointing that out. Uh, but yeah, th- th- this could not possibly have been real, right? Oh, I don't know. I don't think so. I don't think so either. No, oh yeah, no. no if it's yeah, no. There's no definitely way. not. <laughs> Just fun. <laughs> that's real. That's, that's real, right there. That's you right there. Oh my god. Hey, that she cover right me. there. That 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 cover originally has a uh, her shirt says "Twisted Sister" on it because uh, one of uh, D's sons in that movie and. Uh, so I, I put on Twist the Sisters logo 
and I was instructed to take it off. Uh, so uh, the colors took it off. Gene Jimenez took it off. And I thought I could get away with it because of the fact that Adam is such a huge D. Snyder fan. Yeah, and he even put his son in the movie. So, yeah, on, yeah I mean, D. Snyder is like a regular on, on Holliston, the TV yep. series, right? That so, uh, Adam Green does. So, and, and that cover also didn't gain me any points with any feminists. <sighs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Jesus Christ, man. You know. I mean, and especially you're talking about, well, I know, I know. We all, we all, we all, we all feel the, we're all frustrated with this very same group of people that were never part of this, of this scene, that were never, uh, you know, part of the fandom, <laughs> came in and uh, decided to start policing it and fucking it up. And needless to say, real FU horror art isn't going to go over very well with these fucking shrinking violet pussies. Uh -huh. I love, I love this. That's movie. my cover right there. Right yeah. there, baby. Yeah. yeah, that's dope. Yeah, that cover was drawn by uh, Richard Bonk. He's a yeah. badass illustrator. He's he's uh, the one that did Private American with, with yeah. Mike Barron. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say. <laughs> our uh, people are attached together, yo. I know. All I was our gonna, people are attached together. I was saying, Andrew, I was looking at your work, and I'm just like, oh, Mike you know, if 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 Mike doesn't know about this dude yet, he's gonna he's gonna uh, throw some work his way for sure. Oh, oh. Have, have you met have you like have you met Mike by any chance? Not not, not officially. I know know his work. Obviously, I'm a big fan. So oh, you'll he, I, he was on the show before this. You would, <laughs> you would get along famously. Okay, yeah. you would get along famously because Mike is just a real dude. You know, Mike, there's no Mike bullshit, the no artifice guy. with that with that guy. The first time I talked to Mike to ask him if he wanted to be on CromCon, the first CromCon, yeah. he, I was talking to him on Facebook or whatever, and he sent me <laughs> one message, and it was, here's my phone number, Pops, call me. And I was like, oh, shit, this guy's guy old school. I like that. Yeah, and it's man. like, you know. <laughs> yeah, man. That, that, was, that, was, that told me everything I needed to know about Mike. Yeah, man. You know, uh, uh, you know, uh, Humility is a gift that a man gives himself for sure. And uh Mike has it uh in abundance. Ooh. He, Ooh. Even though that's, he, that, he, even that's though he's Richard an icon. Too. I'm sorry? That's Richard Bonk too. Oh, that's <sighs> really good. And this is yours, right? No, that's Buzz and Ken, uh the guys that do a book called The Living Corpse. Are you, oh, I know are that you book. The interior of that one? What I know that yeah, book. Yeah, that's my interiors are in that. Okay, hold up. Because I can show that. Oh, 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 oh. Scooby Doo. <laughs> I thought this was pretty cool. Bigging me for a second, Brian. Oh. Let's look at some interior. Oh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Thank that you. Andrew did. Nice. Oh, yeah, boy. Oh, you got to get to better pages. There's a <laughs> oh, you got to get to better pages. The one I opened it up to. We, we go to, we, we'll find you something good. Oh, Hell yeah. Man. Can't show that. And, uh, and unfortunately, I wish I had more. I wish I had more time to do this book. Uh, yeah. Issue zero was drawn uh, in 2016, uh, which the issue zero recaps the first film. Uh, issue one, I love that nice. kill right there. So <laughs> the Look, she's wearing Spidey's outfit, dude. Yeah. And hey, it pops that. Pops that other page with all the severed heads that has some fans on it right there. Yeah. See, he went and got oh, everybody that his head was severed, all of his friends. Oh, dude. The, the drawn in tears. Oh. I'm telling yeah. you, the drawn in tears, people love to get killed. They do. They love it. And the and the, oh. like the most brutal like ways imaginable. Well, it, issue two of Hatchet. Issue two of Hatchet actually no. has a buddy of mine, Frank Tui, uh getting ripped in half. So, <laughs> I also I also killed Frank on a Puppet Master cover. Also, oh hell yeah, yep. Like I said, people love 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 seeing themselves getting killed in the comics, man. It, it's one of my biggest uh, ways to to say thank you to people I give a shit about is to kill them in books. Um, <laughs> you know, yeah. uh, it's a way of immortalizing you in print, and uh, it, it's fun. I mean, it, you get yeah, no shit. You know, Oh, shit. I, I'd love it if an artist that I knew drug me in a book and rather I get killed off or anything. Hell yeah. Without a doubt, man. Without a doubt. Oh my that's, god. That's my cover. 
We we can That's make badass. that happen, Andrew. How how'd you like to get shot by a big gorilla? <laughs> <laughs> oh. That would be amazing. Oh, dude, yeah. If I commission a, a uh, cover for these guys, like I have uh, Andrew taking a big old slug in the head. Although then again, oh, I've, I've killed myself so- in a lot of books. <laughs> <laughs> Throwing but, yourselves, so throwing yourself into wood chippers or on the I axes. think that's your son saying that, huh? <laughs> just, just want to let you know I care, pops. That's really good art right there. That's a really good uh, movie movie poster style. I think this is from one of the uh, DVD or Blu-ray releases. You know, Arrow uh, puts those out. Vinegar Syndrome. Like this is like the best time ever. This is the best time ever to be a horror movie fan because you, I mean, you can get like these incredible, like, you know, 4k transfers of these like awesome old movies. Like everything oh, yeah. is accessible. Like, Who looks, is this by? It's almost looked like Corbin a bit from back there. But when yeah, you zoom it in, it looks a little different. That's nice. Right. That is, is, that is beautiful right there. And Oh yeah. There's Tony Todd. We're going <laughs> to be, we're going to be talking about him. Yeah, yeah. There you go. That's my buddy Frank right there. <laughs> I had a feeling, man. I looked at this and I had a feeling. You could just tell from the way the face is drawn that that's like an actual person. It's got to be like. I, I even put his initials on the bill of the cap, too. Like it's like a nickname for him. So oh, if someone owns that original. Oh, it's like, yeah. I got you. Don't worry. <laughs> yeah. so, so, so Frank died by Victor Crowley and one of the puppets from Puppet Master. <laughs> oh, hell yeah. Oh, that's the best, man. Oh, that's Hell so yeah. fucking cool. Hell yeah, man. So, uh, actually, let's see. I was going to play the trailer. I don't now, is that a young Andrew do. Mangum? No, I'm kidding. <laughs> 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 you didn't secretly star in this shit, too, did you, Andrew? No. All right, all right. Just check it. All right. <laughs> let's see. Okay, here's the trailer. There right, we go. We can check it out. You guys getting sound? Yes, sir. Yes. Okay. Once upon a time, there was a boy named Victor Crowley. Folks weren't too kind of Victor, so he stayed hidden in his daddy's house. came to his house and there was a bad fire when his daddy chopped down the door to save him he didn't know Victor was pressed against the other side and poor Victor Crowley died they say people disappear in those woods disappear more like fall into a meat grinder yeah, Freddy Krueger right there. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yep, yep. Uh, Robert Englund, uh, yep. horror royalty, and Tony Todd, also horror yep. royalty. Not to mention Kane as Victor Crowley. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. We're going to get into that. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and also Kane as uh, Victor Crowley's father. father. Yep. I want to go home. We're all going to die. We're all going to die. Harry knows. I know. Watch from the past, huh? Hmm. That date that dates this, doesn't it? <coughs> yeah, um, Hatchet caused a real stir when it came out. It was one of those movies that uh, the uh, the horror press was hyping a lot. Uh, you know, Fangoria, although Fangoria was you know kind of like a shell of its former self, I think yeah. around that around that time. Um, and I, you know, I kind of approached it like, because see, I was never, a, I was never a slasher guy when I, when I, when I was a kid. Right. And <laughs> I've never been, not, not that I didn't watch them, 
Yeah. Because I watched, if it was a horror movie, I watched it. Right. Yeah. yeah. Like sub, sub genre be damned, but I wasn't like heavily into like the Friday the 13th movies. Right. Uh, I, I, I liked Elm Street one and three, you know, uh, you know, at that point, you know, at a certain point with the eighties uh, horror franchises, I kind of, you know, started to tune out. My friend Chris, who I, who I believe is listening right now, what up, Chris? If you if you're listening, um, he is like a Friday the the thirteenth, like stand, and you know, knows all his trivia, knows all his lore. Although actually, he's even more of a Halloween stand, right? <laughs> and um, so Victor Crowley is basically um, Jason Voorhees on steroids. Yeah. If, right, but not, not and now mind you, of course, the Jason Voorhees that we all know didn't come from the original Friday the Thirteenth. The Friday the Thirteenth, it was his mother that was mm-hmm. the killer, and then in the second one, it was him, but a much smaller version. And then suddenly, in uh, Friday the Thirteenth Part Three D, uh, he just like, you know. Bulked up, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, got, got some human growth hormone. Yeah, got he got yeah. sw- got swole as fuck. Yeah, and um, you know, and that was also the first movie with the hockey mask and everything. Um, what I love about Victor Crowley is that he is very much like cut from that cloth, but he's still his own character. Yes, yes, right. Yes. It, and, very much so. Right? And I'm just intrigued by the notion, right? Because we don't know what he is exactly, but uh, at one point the heroine says he's trapped in the night that he died. Hmm. Right? So it's, so it, like, is he a ghost? Is he a phantom? Is he actually, like, a human being the way that Jason Voorhees was? In uh, in the first four movies, that is before he came back as a zombie in part six, <laughs> right? Um, but man, I just you know I really enjoyed this one. I I thought it was a th- I I got a real kick out of it. Such um, a good kicker, man, and it's so funny. There's so many well, so, so, so well written all the dialogues. The I'm yeah. Uh, I have. I'm sorry. Could, uh, you have seen all of them? I've seen yeah. one and two. Okay, yeah, I've seen them all. And I, in, in and, three, you get a uh, you get a uh, Derek Mears, the second the the new yeah. the new school of Jason, which is my favorite Jason. I, 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 like, I love I like Derek as Jason. He's the best. He's my he's like the pinnacle. Like that's my favorite one. I, I awesome. loved I loved Derek as Jason because I wanted to see Jason running at people. I wanted yes. to see him, you know, using a bow and arrow. I mean, you figure yeah. he'd know how to fucking hunt. You know what I mean? Fucking Rambo, <laughs> I loved okay. it. Yeah. Okay, and, they, and the- Rambo became him in the last Rambo. They took. Yeah. <laughs> Here's the thing about about Kane Hodder, uh, not being like a Friday the Thirteenth stan, uh, you know uh, the Jasons all kind of blur together for me. But the real fans, the real hardcore fans, there's something about the way that uh, Hodder did the character yeah. that made him like a uh, fan favorite. Oh yeah, like by best. far, like it's like it's not even close. I'm trying to. Uh, which but is it, wait? I mean, after not, that's not him in three. He's in six. I'm thinking. There's a like few when, of them. When did like even he take the, the Freddy versus Jason? There, they had a they had a, a stuntman from Superman, one of the Superman movies. Ken Krenzinger, I think his name was. I like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, that's my third favorite in the in the Freddy franchise. I, I oh like yeah, without much. a doubt, without a doubt. I, I actually think that that's a pretty a pretty fun movie. Real I mean, fun. you know, it's a mo- it's a you know it's a monster mash, you know, like yeah. Frankenstein uh, versus the and Wolfman. The, the ending is too good. Like like we like it would have been like a, maybe half of what we got at the end would have been I would have loved it, but what we we got it so much more. I love that you know, Tom and Jerry fight at the end of that movie. But yeah, no, it was. I'm, I thought it I'm was side fun. Question. Yeah. Yeah, I thought it was fun, and that's the thing. It's like when some people g- get disappointed by movies like that. I'm just like. Like, were you expecting the original Halloween? Were you expecting Night of the Living Dead? Were you expecting Dawn of the Dead? Right. Do you know, it, it's it's like way pit, like I understood why people didn't like uh, uh, Halloween Kills, but at the same time, people were like so vehemently against it. I'm just like, what part of Halloween like Part Thirteen don't you understand? Seriously, <laughs> what, right? what I like about I this think, movie, I too, think is people kills, overanalyzed. Man. I think people overanalyze movies and comics way too fucking much. Oh yeah! Quit expecting totally. Shakespeare. Just have fun. Yes. Yeah. They watch him under a microscope, and it's like just go in there and watch, watch the fucking yep. movie. 
You know what I mean? <laughs> and, it's, oh, if you get, and, and ask for entertainment. You know, uh, you you really don't need the physics behind everything. No. Just be and it's better when you don't uh, and, have all the and, answers. And, everything doesn't need to be explained all the time either, exactly. right, Brian? Right, right, exactly. Like I mean, <laughs> ambiguity is something that. Well, here's the thing: always treat your audience as if they're as intelligent as you are. Maybe more so because some of them are. Right. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> that dude. That's absolutely. why I draw real absolutely. simply. I mean, just like have respect for your audience and just understand that, like, it's just like everything gets so fucking, uh, you know, dumbed down. Everything has to be explained. I one of the things Maybe. I always loved about Italian horror films, especially the Italian horror movies from like the late seventies and the early eighties, is that they would just take logic and just crumple it up and toss it out the window and be like, "Hey, guess what? You're in a nightmare." That's fiction. Yeah. Yep. Right, you're watching somebody else's nightmare. Like Fulci was really great at that. <laughs> that's yeah. fiction. When you take the real stuff and you ball it up and you throw it away, well, yeah, that's fiction. Yeah. Now you know that you know you know what you're in for when this poor dude gets his arm ripped off and then like uh, Victor is like jamming <laughs> his hand into his back and like pulling his fucking spine out. <laughs> And then we get these shots of the blood splashing on the trees. In the trees. <laughs> yeah. So it's just Twilight. like, yeah, it's just, this movie's in an interesting space, like genre wise. I hear he's getting yeah. uh, ripped, ripped in half like fucking Captain Rhodes. <laughs> right. Oh, the kills man. In these yeah. movies, man. They're so creative. Brutal. Well, creative. Well, he, like they're, really they're, creative in, in the genre. Of, like they, they really, they're really thought out. You know what I mean? Like in, yes, in, all they the, are. in the whole franchise. Whoa. They're, they're, they're thought out. I saw that. Um, which Boom. I, you know, I find there. interesting. <laughs> what was that? Mardi Gras. There's baby. boobs there. I didn't see. I, I didn't see Bourbon any, Street. I didn't see any boobs. Bourbon Street. Per perverts seeing shit that's not not there. Bourbon like, Street. Wish, wishful thinking. Yeah, like the first, especially. I mean, uh, you, you get you get that you get uh, you know Robert Englund and his son getting ripped up ripped apart at the uh, at the beginning of the movie, but it's once of course. <laughs> You know, it, it, he gets to the weapons that 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 shit gets really, really, really interesting. And you got so, office space too, right there. Jump to conclusions. Remember that? Yes, yes, yes. Um, trivia. Uh, this T-shirt that you see on this actor, I'm forgetting his name right now, is for the, the comic book store where Adam Green uh, used to get his comics uh, when he was uh, a kid growing up in uh, New Hampshire. <laughs> so it's like a little way of like giving them some props. Yeah, so basically, the plot, very, very simple, let's face it. Slasher movies were never exactly plot heavy. Uh, it's Mardi Gras, and they're these college kids. Whoa! And uh, you didn't see that. Um, and uh, one of them, you know, our, uh, our, our lead is heartbroken because his girlfriend dumped him, and he's just like not well, in the mood to party. And so uh, check out the high waters on the lady behind them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no shit. Damn, pops, you got a Those sharp... aren't even capris, bro. Those are just high waters. <laughs> yeah, flutters, man. Damn, you got a sharp eye, pops. I love the eighties, nineties. Yeah, New Orleans. yeah, man. Big yeah, character man. in this movie, uh, New Orleans itself, or in the franchise. That's another thing yeah. that helps build the character up too. You know. I, I no one really Absolutely. that I can think of did that, and I I still think that this this uh this slasher uh, icon I think he's I don't know man I haven't seen really anybody top him yet I mean the, the only thing that comes close Art would the be clown. Ter Terrifier yeah yeah that'd be like the... kind of close but still yeah yeah, yeah. Crowley fucks him up like regardless yeah yeah well opinion. yeah he's got seniority too do you know what I'm saying he's got seniority he's got <laughs> soul and I was also gonna yeah. say probably he's also like a little bit of um Joseph a little bit of the Elephant Man thrown in you know what I mean oh without a but, doubt. Yeah, 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 yeah. And what's great is that the makeup on him is incredible. Yes. Now, the special effects makeup artist for this was it was uh, John Carl Buechler. Mm. And he was kind of like the poor man Savini. Okay. Right? Like, you had, like, the really big guys, like Rick Baker, Rob Bottin. Savini. Uh, Savini, right? He wasn't one of those guys. He was, like, kind of underneath them, kind of like... Um, he was doing like uh, the effects of movies like go, go, uh, Ghoulies. Oh, okay. oh yeah. yeah, right, ghoulies? like Ghoulies, yeah. and Ghoulies Two, and Ghoulies Three. You know what I mean? Like, uh, 
like uh, ch- like uh, Charles Band movies, that kind of a thing. Oh, okay. But it, I mean, if that's true, I mean, I, 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 you know, I I know there's other people that worked on the effects on this movie. <laughs> the effects in this so good. Uh, they blow because oh. uh, I saw John Carl, Carl Buechler and I was like, uh, like uh, the effects aren't going to be that great. And then I saw the effects; and they're amazing. I was just like, shame like, on that, me, shame on scene, me for like, yeah. When he takes out like, well, just the way it's shot. That scene when he takes out Office Space's wife. You know what I mean? Oh my god! Uh, he comes up and grab her, and then they roll the camera around her back, and then yes. he rips her head off. The one that he did the cover of. That yes. was amazing. And their little tongues like tingling. Oh yeah, 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 you know yeah, I mean? yeah, yeah. Shot so well because like... he, he cut one thing and he cut right into another. Seamless. That was like that was like a great job from the director too. That was that was like some next level shit. Well, it's just great because it's like you, you know, unfortunately one of the, one of the parties been like bitten by a alligator. Yeah. Of the you know this group of uh, people that have uh, gone on a like a haunted swamp tour f- find themselves stranded in the bayou with uh, with Victor Crowley, who is I don't know if I would even call him a serial killer. He's really a monster. Yeah, he's a straight up a ghost monster, right? And yeah. I love the fact also that they didn't just make up his face; they made up his <clears throat> body. His shoulders, his back has the uh, vertebrae coming out. He's got right, big right, shoulders. right. Yeah, Cause, yeah, cause, yeah. Because, 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 um, Hotter is swole, but I mean, this he's even bigger than that. Well, I don't know that. I, I don't know that Hotter is swole. I think Hotter is one of those guys. Yeah. Like uh, Gun- Gunnar Hansen was like that too. I remember seeing that guy at a convention. That's yeah. just ominous. Yeah. Do you know what I'm saying? Like it'd be yeah. like the nicest people in the world, but you see them and you're like, oh my god, that guy could hurt me. Right. You know. Like that guy looks like a bench presses refrigerator. <laughs> and he does a lot of his own stunts because he was a stunt coordinator. So he's probably yeah. doing a lot of his own there. stuff. But you got there. Sorry, so the first movie y'all are reviewing, that's recap. Oh, shit. In the... Zero. Andrew, Andrew, I'm sorry. You're, you're ro- roboting a little bit. Can you repeat that? Oh, God damn it. Oh, we can't just, uh, now. It's you. Can you hear me? Yeah. Yeah, okay. yeah, 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 yeah. We can hear you now. You're just roboting a little. That's all. Just a uh, um, like um, internet, internet's lag. Recaps. Oh yeah, he's talking about how the, the first movie we're about to watch. Right. It's it's like the Cliff Notes version. Right. Yeah. It's like the Cliff Notes version before you get into the actual uh into the actual series, like the issue zero. Yeah, I, I gotta, get, issue I gotta zero, get those, so. man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't want to get those, man, forever. I, I um I'm glad that they started uh that they started doing those again, actually. That uh I mean actually that they even started doing those, the uh issue zero zeros. Oh, I, yeah. just lo- I, I just love how he just comes exploding out of that the cabin. cabin <laughs> yeah, right? it was epic, right? Like, he, I mean, really fantastic. Yeah. And, uh, you know, he, he he chops this poor dude in half. And what I especially love is how he takes the upper half of his body and throws <laughs> it aside, but it's not in close-up, that it's in a long shot. Yeah. Right? Because he's doing it, like, immediately he's throwing it aside because now he's on this woman's ass. Right. And and yeah, there's this wonderful moment. Spoiler alert, people, um, where he like grabs this woman by the mouth, and the camera swings around. Right yeah. there's the actor, and it swings around, and then we get the uh, the effect, the animatronic. Now uh, they had a strict rule about this. Uh, Adam Green uh, specifically said like no friggin' CGI. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Like for Boten, except for erasing things, right? So if there's yeah. wires or something like that, which I always thought, like that's what CGI is good for. That's what's for, yeah. Like right? Is it racing shit? Racing shit, yeah. <laughs> right. In other words, it's best when you don't notice it. And he just like, oh, look at that! Just opens the top <laughs> of her head like a soda can. <laughs> oh, and what's especially great is the attention to detail because you can see her like tongue flopping around. <laughs> her, tongue, her tongue is still moving. 
And uh, yeah, Victor Victor Crowley is on the prowl. is is on the ass now. And uh, turns out that this woman is the uh, daughter of Robert Englund's character from the beginning, and uh, the other guy who got killed was was her brother. Uh, so they've disappeared into the swamp, and two days before, and she's gone looking for him. And uh, she shoots him. But is he going to get back up again? What do you think? And <laughs> that's pretty much that's pretty much the nature of this movie. Uh, what I love about it is that I, it's kind of in this nebulous territory where it's just like, well, would I call this a horror comedy? Would I call it uh, – because it's not a satire, right? It's like – an no. homage? It's an homage, and then, and then the second movie, it kind of goes into his own, and then the kill count gets even bigger. Like, I like, I, I like, I love them all. Um, but even, um, yeah, they, they retell the, the story. They, in, the, in the second one, they kind of touch on the origin story a little bit, and it goes a little deeper with him and his yeah. wife, uh, with, with um, um, Victor Crawley's dad and his, his mom. Um, in the third movie, they just go full, like, SWAT team comes in, and it's, it's, it's like, it's crazy. It's like a war. <laughs> oh, that's, you know what I mean? oh, that's, Oh, that sounds yeah. brilliant. That sounds yeah. brilliant. Yeah. Well, I mean, one of the things I loved about Jason Goes to Hell was the beginning of that was what was that's was, was genius. A lot like that, you know what I mean? And but even better, like right because like, you're always all, thinking you got to buy all four of them, dude. The fourth one, right? probably my least favorite in, in out of all four. Okay, but it's still good, and it takes place like on on like they're on a ship or on an airplane. It crashes in the swamp, and they're stuck in this tube. So it's creating this drama. He's coming at them like that, and it's almost like a little different. Of a subgenre horror because it's it's like um what's the word oh so like a like Where a you're like stuck a, in one like, little spot you know what I mean a, uh, yeah yeah like a siege movie um yeah more like um what's the word claustrophobia horror I would say because they can't leave the boat they can't I'm sorry they can't leave the cla- the crashed airplane because it's in the swamp and he's coming right, up to the crashed airplane attacking them too and there's gators and who knows what and then the the the, the what I like about the like, little thing they didn't even have to fucking do but they did it the character the, the tour guide the the Asian dude. He plays yeah, like yeah, a yeah. Cajun, then he plays an Asian, then he plays an American dude. Like, what's up, man? Like, like they didn't have to do that, but there's just smart writing in this movie. I love the lighting in this scene too. It's got like a, uh, like a Steven Spielberg feel to it. You know what I mean? Like ET or something. Right. You know what I mean? Right. Yeah. It's up. a little. It, yeah, yeah. It, it, it's like some soft lighting and a little yep. bit of like a sepia tone. Exactly. And there is Mr. Hoder minus makeup. Uh, I, I've I've never met him. I know he does a lot of conventions. Uh, I generally hear good, hear uh, nothing but good good things about him. He's a very good guy. Oh, so I'd you like know him. him? Not like friends. Met him at shows because of these, right. you know, the books. So. Right, 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 yeah. right. That's dope. That is that is. Oh well, man, I can imagine people would would, would want uh, uh, copies of uh, of the Hatchet comics signed by him. Yeah, uh, I've had a. Uh... Uh, a buddy of mine, Stephen, uh, he got killed. I killed him on another Hatchet cover called Hatchet Vengeance. And uh, he owns his original artwork, and he brought it to Kane to get Kane to sign the original artwork also. Oh, nice. So. That's that's fantastic. Yeah, uh, from what I've heard, he sounds like one of those. He sounds grateful. Yes. <laughs> you know, he sounds like uh, somebody who kind of like, you know, just like fell into well, this. It's like, you know, Kane. This. Kane not only is a brilliant character actor, I mean, the guy's a, a fucking masterful stunt man. I mean, he's yeah. worked with Rob Zombie and everybody on tons of films. So yeah, he, he's worked on films that you don't know he worked on as a stunt coordinator. Wow. Yeah, I, I mean, he started out as a stunt man. I think that's what yeah. got him the uh, got him the Jason role. Because the thing is, is is uh, if you know, if you and, and it makes sense too. It, it's like if you're gonna put a put a mask on somebody, uh, and why not just use the person that can actually like you know throw themselves down a flight of stairs and like not die. Yeah. Although stuntmen are just l- complete lunatics. <laughs> You know, I mean, they're like they're like, they're like professional wrestlers, supposedly. They're just yeah, it's like they're like, uh, you know, um, who is it? Uh, John Melius said that he had a stuntman beg him, like beg him, oh please let me throw myself down this flight of stairs. <laughs> and he oh, was like, man. no, dude, you like you could break your neck. He's like, oh please, please, please. <laughs> like, yeah, see, some so, some stuntmen really they put themselves out there and they they regret it later. Uh, <laughs> Uh, oh Tyler God. Wayne actually sent yeah. one of the stuntmen on uh, Rob Zombie's Halloween to the hospital because he kind of dared Tyler to to do his roughest on him. So when Tyler oh, no. like throws him to the ground, he severely hurt this guy. Oh 
my yeah, God. Yeah, I, lo- I love me some uh, – sorry, no shame. I love me some Tyler Main, uh, Michael Myers. He's my yep. favorite. Big motherfucker. Yep. Like that, I, I, I like that's what I'm saying. I like I like the first I like those Rob Zombie Halloweens. He's badass. Yeah. My friend Chris, uh, once again, uh, much love to you, brother. If you're listening, he actually, uh, I wouldn't say forced tricked maybe me into like watching uh, like the first 15 minutes of uh, <laughs> of Rob Zombie's Halloween too. Yeah, it's just a thing with me, Andrew. I just like I'm not a Rob Zombie fan. Uh, I, just, I I wasn't big on uh, his monsters movie. That that was pretty painful. Oh Jesus. Oh, I haven't yeah, watched it. Man. Oh, I, am, I do like Rob Zombie's like most of his movies. I like House Here's of the Corpses, thing. Reject, Halloween, Halloween Two. I like those four for sure. Andrew, tell me if you agree with me. One of the things <clears throat> that makes that movie so painful is that the actors who are playing Herman and Grandpa are amazing. Like they're really, really good. And I then, think I think I think Grandpa was the best part. Right. Uh, and Even that's, though I didn't uh, like Robot. the mustache, I'll check it out. Um, I still want to watch it. Yeah, Daniel Robach, he's one of us. He's like a horror guy. Since I became a grandpa, it usually is. <laughs> I kind of like the stash, though. It looked pretty, like kind of, kind of biker. Well, you know what I mean? I don't know. Here's the thing: it. they're brilliant. Like they're terrific. And I forget the name oh. of the actor who plays Herman. He's but good. he's constantly doing all these crazy things with his face, his face and his teeth and stuff. And, yeah, and and, yeah. and 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 he and this like high pitched voice, and the and he got the ho 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 ho, got that <laughs> down. But then every time Rob Zombie's chick is on the, is on screen, it's just like the movie comes like eek, screeching to a halt because she's so bad that she just stops yeah. the movie, and it's just like. I understand, dude. You have to put your chick in every movie you make or she's going to, like, drop your ass. I understand that. But do you have to then make the whole movie revolve around her? You know, it's just, oh, yeah. Uh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry for that uh, anti-Rob Zombie monst- uh, monster's <laughs> rant. You have to bring that up, Andrew. You have to bring that up. It's, sorry. Oh, it's a trigger. <laughs> <laughs> Don't like, trigger it, Brian. It's just, oh my, my favorite Rob, my favorite Rob Zombie film was Devil's Rejects, though. Yeah, mine too. Mine too. Yeah, I love I love Forsyth in there, and I and yeah. I like uh, D- well, DDP and, and Trejo. Bill Mosley is the shit. Watch Bill a movie, Mosley. those guys. But Bill Mosley's the shit. DDP, just, uh, man, talk about about nice freaking guys, man. That dude's like a freaking saint. Jesus, man, just like moving these like uh, broken down old wrestlers into his home and just rehabbing them and giving them like their bodies back, getting them off the pills and the booze and all that shit. That dude's doing, doing the Lord's work right there. Well, and, and Dallas is like truthfully that way. He doesn't do it just for show either. You know? Oh, I, 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 I he, he strikes me. Oh, I mean, do, I mean, do you know personally? Because he's, no. I mean, well, I, I know. Is- it's a small industry. So everybody knows everybody who knows somebody, you know what I mean? So- yeah, 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 yeah. Yep, yep, that, that's the word, right. Yeah, no, I mean, you could tell. Uh, although, it's just like, when you see a human being that virtuous, even even I start to go, maybe he's got, like, bodies hidden in, like, the crawl space under his house or something. <laughs> Do you know what I'm saying? No, I love that dude, man. Yeah, uh, it's uh, what he's doing is, uh, is freaking magnificent. Uh but yeah, uh, oh yeah, and then of, of, of course uh, the dialogue in this is 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 really snappy. There's oh, one man. line, evidently, I, like I said, I've only seen the first two movies. <laughs> I'm gonna watch three and four. Oh, you got uh, it. You're gonna love them after this. Love, get a big old bucket of popcorn, Brian. Big old bucket you got of popcorn. It. You got it. Uh, one line that appears in the uh, ev- evidently in each film is, "You've got to be fucking kidding me." <laughs> that line, of course, from John Carpenter's remake of The Thing. And uh, this is that moment in this where, like, man, you get this great old school fire stunt. You do not see this shit anymore. Yeah. It's all that, like, really shitty looking CGI fire. <laughs> I've got CGI fire on me. Uh, yeah. Here, look, I'm torn. I'm torn. If I was the director, I. I'd be reluctant to let somebody set themselves on fire in front of me. I'd be like, dude, dude, can we just like CGI this? Cause you know, God forbid somebody gets like, you know, like, like really freaking hurt. Right. Yeah. I mean, even with all the safety precautions and stuff that these guys take shit still happens. Maybe he's just right? like, Oh, Hodder's got this or something. 
you know? Right. I don't know. <laughs> right. But then that's it's just like, then I see it. I see it. I'm like, yeah. oh, that's so dope. Right. Like one of the, oh man, one of the things I loved about seeing Maniac Cop 2 on a big screen, they were showing that uh, at the uh, Alamo Draft House Yonkers. And the mm. director, Bill Lustig, was there, right? Doing a Q&A and everything like that. Really, really uh, cool guy. And uh, there's a scene where uh, at the end, um, why am I forgetting Maniac Cop's name? It's uh, somebody in the chat. Help me out. What's uh, the name of the uh, Cordell, right? Where Cordell is set on fire and he's just going from cell to cell, killing the dudes that oh. like uh, that set him up. Oh, and, you know, there's a shot, I mean, where it's like actually a dude in a costume, but it's on fire and he's like <laughs> reaching towards the camera. I was just like, oh, that looks amazing. So it's just like you have to weigh that like, you know, uh, awesome, uh, awesome shots like this or people potentially uh, burning themselves to death. Jesus. Yeah, old. You're school, talking about man. the practical effects and everything. Amazing. I love that shit in movies. Um, oh, yeah. oh, dude, dude. Um, I'm, you know, I mean, uh, uh, p- people accuse me of being a Luddite because I'm so anti CGI. Uh, but I'm sorry. The real thing just looks better because it's the real thing. I'm the same way with comic books, dude. I think artists need to be able to stand by themselves in black and white and not depend on digital coloring or any of that fancy oh. shit to make their books look good. So oh. if you look at my black and white artwork, I strive to make it look like finished product. It's like a musician standing, uh, playing acoustically. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. You, oh, yeah. you shouldn't have to have all the bells and whistles to make your shit look good. I agree. I agree. Oh, dude, you're like you're going to get along with Preston, man. Uh, when I get pages from him, he did uh, is- issue eight. Is going to be doing issues uh, nine and ten of uh, Six Gun Gorilla. When I get the when I get his pages, they're so beautiful. I just like I'm like, can we just like print it like this? Because I don't want to see I don't want to see I don't want to see him touched, right? Uh, and uh, what he did was instead of actually because I'm a black and white guy all the way, right? I'm a black and white stand big time. Uh, oh yeah. Oh, that looks great. So that's a cover for, uh, can't show you everything. That's a cover I'm working on for uh, Merck Entertainment, or Merck Publishing right now. So. Oh my God, that's fantastic. Yeah. Dude. Clean. I love black and white work. Me too. Oh, yeah. Like I best. said, black, black and white stand. But what, oh. um, what Preston did was he actually, like, quote unquote, inked it himself in pencil. And then I wanted to do like a special <laughs> artist, artist edition. Uh, because like the, I was just like I just want it, you know. Can we just use it like this, right? Uh, but then Ollie from Six Five Six came in, laid down the colors, and preserved every single bit of that line work. And I think, you know, that's a true colorist when they don't. Um, it's hard where they're not trying to draw attention to themselves. Well, they're not painting it; they're coloring it a little bit. Hey, you know, what as mean? long as they don't well, bleed I'm, out the artist's line work, the actual exactly. art. As long as yeah, they don't bleed over that shit with colors. A colorist, you know? a colorist works the same way an inker does. I, I started in the industry as an inker and worked as an inker at DC and had the pleasure of inking over a bunch of guys. <clears throat> and I still enjoy inking once in a while. Um, but an, uh, your job is to enhance the artwork, not to distract yes. from it. You know what I mean? Yes, uh, yes. I, I see a lot of guys that either a bad inker ruins the book or a bad colors ruins the book. And I had this guy send me some of his work. He, he wasn't a, 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 an American speaking individual and he, he messaged me on Facebook and just sent me his artwork. And he basically was telling me to find him work. And I, I kind of corrected him and said, dude, first off, you don't approach somebody you don't know and tell them to find you work. Uh, oh. I don't like your work. So I'm not going to show your work off. And he was like, what do you mean you don't like my work? And, of course, he's speaking in broken English. And I was like, you're an amateur. Your work's not good enough for me to show off to any editor I know. And he's like, well, what do you – everybody says my work is great. And I'm like, well, they're lying to you. They're just being <laughs> nice. You know? Yeah, yeah. And that's the thing, man. If you don't – seriously, <sighs> if you're going to do any kind of art, just wear a cup. Don't be a pussy. I, it's just like I, I, I can't look, man. I look. I can never tell if my if my if my writing is good or not. 
right? Because it's on my at the end of my nose. I can't judge it until maybe like you know five, ten years later or something like that. So I rely on people to like let me know, like, am I fucking up? Is this good? And uh, you know, uh, the great thing is that when you're collaborating with a great artist, is that you also writer and artist complement one another. And that you never have that attitude of, well, my idea is better than yours because it's my idea, right? That it's just like yeah. everybody's just dedicated towards the same goal, which is just the finished product, which is just making a dope ass comic book. Uh, but yeah, needless to say, a little fire isn't going to keep Victor Crowley down. It starts raining. And uh, oh man, we get this great impalement right here. <laughs> Once again, man, just the makeup and uh, the fact that it's, you know, his, his like, that's a full body thing. I yeah. just love that. I just love that. That scene where he spits all that fucking foam in his mouth, too, that spit. Oh, that's, it's, it's so, so gnarly. Gross. Yeah, gnarls. Oh, a uh, little bit of trivia. Uh, that actor, when he pukes in this movie, it's real puke. I bet, dude. That's that dude from Grandma's Boy. Classic movie, by the way. Adios, turd, Adios, turd nuggets. Do you remember that one? I've never seen it. What is that? Oh, it's, it's Adam Sandler's best movie, and he's only in it for like probably two seconds. Oh, that explains it. If it's an Adam Sandler movie, <laughs> I haven't but he's seen like, it. It's so good. It's hilarious. You see it? a young Jonah, a young Jonah Hill in there too. But this guy's in oh. there. He's this tech nerd, and he dresses like he's in the Matrix because it was right around when the Matrix came out. And Grandma's boy is a video game designer, and um, I don't. Know. Anyways, it's a funny movie. It's hilarious. Okay, I'll take uh, check I will it out. Take your... I will definitely take your word for it. Uh, but yeah, the actor uh, uh, is named Joel David Moore. And I think what he did was, I think he like knocked that back like some, like they didn't want to use fake vomit, supposedly. Mm. You know, when the actors, you could always tell they just like put some some crap in their mouth and they're spitting it out. Baby. Right? <laughs> like you want the liver oil. And, yeah. and actually, <clears throat> I think that's what they use. I think they used cod liver oil and cold clam chowder. <laughs> oh, <laughs> so gosh. And, uh, it took one for the, well, that's it. Well, that's the thing, man. That's a trooper. That's a trooper oh. right there. I like whenever you see like uh, uh, directors when they're using like the same actors over and over and over again, it's usually because that person's a trooper. It's, yeah. it's like if they're a prima donna or a pussy, they're not going to want to work with them again. But if there's somebody that will like throw down like that, yeah, it's just of course, you know, how can you not uh find people just, like that in the mirror? Just a tablespoon or full, you know, just yeah, but it's but it's but, it, but yeah, it's gnarly because when you see him puking, you can see it's just like, like actual, like blasted out of his mouth, projectile vomit, yo. yeah, yeah, oh god, yeah, um, but that's the thing. Also about like the violence in a movie like this, uh, we were t we, we mentioned Terrifier before and Terrifier Two. It's oh, I not just seen supposed that. to be. Oh, <laughs> we will we will we, we must discuss, sir. Um, it's these movies aren't meant to be realistic. The gore isn't <laughs> meant to be realistic, right? It's no. it's cartoon gore. Have we we all know stylized. that human bodies exactly. <laughs> Exactly, and that's what makes you feel like you're watching like a comic book or something like that, right? It's, it's or a kung uh, fu or a or a martial arts film, you know, like right, right, blood right. sprays, you know. Yeah, Kill yeah, Bill yeah. did it pretty good. Sorry, well, Sorry, Brian. well, no, 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 that's okay. <laughs> Although I remember a teacher of mine that was a Vietnam veteran, and uh, we were watching Shogun Assassin. Uh, in, in, like I, because I, I would bring in tapes, he would let me play them, you know, during uh during uh during lunch hour, and you know, uh, if you've ever seen the Lone Wolf and Cub movies, uh, you know, uh, they're like the comics where somebody gets get, gets cut with a sword, you see blood <laughs> spraying out, right, and mm -hmm. and he's watching the movies with with me and my friends. He's like, you know, actually, that's really re very realistic. Hmm. How would and, you know that? <laughs> He'd been in Vietnam and seen some shit. Okay. Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, that's why, like, you, like one of the things that drives me, it's always driven me crazy, is when you're watching a movie and somebody gets their throat slit, right? And they use the old, um, the fake straight razor with the fake blood that comes out, right? And it's just like, they slash them across <laughs> the throat and there's this thin little line of blood and they go, oh. <laughs> when you cut somebody's jugular vein, their blood will hit the ceiling. Yeah. Right? And 
I remember watching RoboCop at the theater when it came out, and when Clarence Boddicker gets 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 shanked and his blood's squirting out like that, yeah. the audience started roaring with laughter. <laughs> right? Really? Yeah. Crazy. Wish I was but, there. I mean, that's all, but that's also like, uh, you know, uh, when somebody's uh, – a lot of historical uh, 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 dramas and films, they'll have to change the facts because the truth is just, like, too incredible. Right. Like, but, they ain't going to believe that. Actually, it's so far-fetched. Uh, yeah, exactly. Stranger than fiction. To the max, to the max. And uh, boy, don't we live in those times. So, uh, Pops, have you ever seen Have you ever seen Hatchet? Thoughts, oh. opinions? Oh, yeah. Me. <laughs> um, I was a big fan of Kane. I don't know why, but Kane Hodder, some, for some reason, I was a big fan of his. Anything that he was, you know. Yeah. Anything is involved in, I I watched as soon as it came out. Uh, yeah, and I was a Victor Crowley fan. Come on, man who 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 that is not an Ozzy Osbourne fan did not look at everything <laughs> that they ever saw that said Mr. Crowley on it from right. the day that album came oh, out. Mr. Crowley, you see what I'm saying? It's like, oh, that's who he's talking about. Now you're watching the movie, and that's exactly why I watched the movie. Hell yeah. You know, blame and, Ozzy. And oh, always, always blame Ozzy. Always blame Ozzy. <laughs> well, hey, man, look, I remember as a little kid, like, even though uh, Dio was a, was, was, a, was a great replacement for him in Black Sabbath, I just refused to listen to those records when I was a kid because I was, like, such a Ozzy freak. But, uh... I like both. I, you know. yeah, yeah. yeah. Let's take a yeah. let's take a look at Andrew's campaign again, and uh, if you can make that happen. Pops. You mean Hart's campaign again? Oh, Hart's campaign. I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm a little. On. I'm a little. I'm a little. I'm a little uh, uh, depleted at the moment. You? Know. you? I'm yeah. over here trying to work. In <laughs> why you think I'm hiding? I'm over here trying to work. Gotcha, um, gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. You know how bad I messed this up. I guess what you, up. You, what were, up. you were in the right studio. I was in. Ah, oh, what the fuck, pops? I've been sitting here editing, editing all the all the uh, broadcasts everywhere because they all had the wrong shit on them. <laughs> wow, 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 wow! They're good now. They're all fixed now. But you know, <laughs> <laughs> see, I'm, I'm, you know, you're I in say? control, pops. We know, we know. You're on top I'm, of shit. You're on top of shit. I get high. <laughs> Sometimes I screw it up. Usually I don't have two of somebody's show in the studio at the same time. <laughs> but I had set up the John Carpenter's Vampires one, right? Oh, that's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I yeah. accidentally went into that studio. Yeah. Um. Uh. The reason we. Oh, yeah. That's going to be. I think our first show of uh, January third. Yes. That's right. That's right. With right. Margin Holden. Yes. Yes. The the, the uh, super hot uh, uh, black chick vampire, like the yes. master, one of the master vampires, one of the ones one that comes out of the vampire. ground. You know, that's all like dressed in like the goth chic and everything. Remember, you Matt Matt seen vampires before, but we need to do that again also because, uh, you know, uh, Sim missed missed it that one time. Yeah. And we're and we're gonna have him out. We're gonna bring him a special guest. Yeah, boy. Somebody that was actually in the movie, so All you right. know. Let me... um, I'm having too much fun right now, B. I'm just saying, dude. You know? Like, if you're not having fun doing this crap that we're doing, then like, why do it, right? <laughs> There's something wrong with us if we're not having fun. It's just like when I hear people complaining about making comics, I'm just like, well, find something else to do. If you're not having fun making 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 comic books, I get you're, sick you're, of. I Dude, yes, I get sick of hearing ahead. people bitch about. I get sick of hearing people bitch about making comic books, and they act like it's so fucking difficult. It's really no. fucking not, nice. dude. It's, I get, it's, so it's a much fucking fun. funny book, you yes, know. Yes. You get all exactly. these fucking motherfuckers that whine yeah. online yeah. about how nobody likes their work and nobody supports them, and they just cry like little bitches. And it's like, just fucking keep going and and don't be feel upset if somebody doesn't like your fucking work. Just go do it for you. Uh, uh, right. the, the total other end of it too, you guys. You're not painting the Mona fucking Lisa. No. You're making a goddamn comic book. Get it out into right. people's hands. Well, and make well, entertainment. You know, Andrew, like you're entertaining people. It's supposed to be entertainment. <laughs> 
You're supposed to be yeah. hopefully giving people waiting a little for, bit of joy, uh, getting them, uh, you know, I'm just like saying, gonna... waiting, waiting a year is not entertaining. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> okay. There's, uh, there's no entertainment wink, value wink. in that. Okay. Wink, wink, okay. nudge, nudge. <laughs> A year, a year. I'd try like two years, two, try three yeah, years, I try know. five I'm years. Nice. Trying to be nice. I know, I know. <laughs> it's all good. It's all but good. Yeah, every, but yeah, every Andrew, one of the things. The Mona Lisa. Yeah, no. I, I, I always say, like, my favorite thing about this scene is seeing people like Matt, who were, who were, you know, who was like a name in the chat. Yep. And then watching, you know, and, and then people like him looking at people like, uh, like Steve me and Lee. some of some of my friends and going like, damn, if those morons can pull this shit off, Steve like, Lee, why don't I throw Lee. my hat in the ring? And and now they're doing it. And <laughs> I hope <but> the, <laughs> it, it breaks my what, what, what I'm trying to say is it also it breaks my heart when I see like people like, oh, I want to do this. I want to do that. I want to make comic books. I want to make movies. I want to make music. And, but they're afraid of sucking. <laughs> and that prevents them. From, from taking that for, from doing anything, I'm just yeah. like, get your shitty work out of the way. What's the science? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like scientists, they have to go and they experiment on shit and they have to fail at it. And they're like, okay, this is what we got wrong. Let's go at it again. Okay, we failed again. Well, and, it, all science. Yeah, I do think you. I do think you need to be realistic about it. Uh, I'm not real good with color, so if I'm like, you know what, tomorrow I'm going to practice digitally coloring, I'm going to fucking suck. And I may not have the talent for it. And I don't want everybody to tell me how great I am because I fucking suck at it. You know what I mean? Right. So I think if you have a desire to try something, try it. Fucking give it a whirl. Fucking try it. It's like trying fucking food for the first time. Just fucking mm -hmm. try it. Yeah. Uh, be prepared Amen. that you may fail. And if you fail, keep going or fucking pack it up and say you tried it and move on to something else. I, I look at it like this. Look. You see the first timers, and then you know they get through that first book. But I want to see the progression. I want to see the yeah. the art yep. journey. I want to see you two, three, four, five, six books down the line, Dude. and how much better you've gotten. Dude. I don't want to. I don't want to see you do one book and then give up because you didn't think it was good enough. Yes, there you it know? is. There it is. And uh, like we had um, uh, um, uh, Peter Gilmore on. And I bust his balls about this uh, uh, because, you know, he was talking about doing like the next issue of uh, uh, Jack the Ripper Vampire Slayer. And he's just like, oh, well, you know, because we're like, dude, like you're leveling up. You're getting like, you know, you're getting better. Right. And it's so much fun. I've gotten to see so many of my friends leveling up in the past two years. And he's like, yeah, but, you know, but now I'm like so much better than I was in the previous than the previous issue. I'm going to have to like make my art not as good. I'm going to have to like bring the grade of the art down so that it matches the first issue. And I was just like, really, dude? Really? <laughs> it's just like file that under like really stupid things said by really smart people. It's like nobody ever went like, oh man, this is shit. The second, the second issue, it's so much, the art's so much better than the first one. I'm, I'm out. It's, it's you weird, know? man, too. Like if, I don't know, like say you get good, like it's hard to go back and redo stuff. Like me, I, I, I probably wouldn't Let go back. Go. I, I don't go back and redo anything. I say, ah, this shit no. sucks. Oh, well, <laughs> yeah. I just keep moving yeah. forward. You yeah, know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. Like, go. ah, I got to keep moving, you know? Yes. <laughs> Constant forward momentum. Yeah. And, and, and learning from your mistakes and not being a little pussy when people tell you, uh, give you their uh, honest critiques. And yes. if, if everybody's telling you the same thing, you keep hearing the same thing that yeah. you did wrong, yeah. odds are they're right. And then if everybody's telling you something different, you done fucked up. <laughs> <laughs> like, the, like that. It's just like, Oh, then, then yeah. Uh, you know, you, um, you know, you, 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 you hopefully get better with, uh, with time and, and, uh, and never stop growing too. You know, you don't want to be that dude that's uh, like uh, content to be uh, where they are. You want to, uh, you know. I hope. Oh, it looks like you got another backer. Or that yeah. uh, heart got another Woo. backer. Yep. Yeah, boy. Thank you, people in the chat. Let's get this book to two uh, K. It's a very modest goal. Yeah, I could do it. Most definitely, yeah. man. It's weird too. Like if you learn something new in like a craft, you know what I mean? And it's like, yeah. Wow, I just fucking leveled up. I just learned something new. Ha, ha motherfucker. Like like, yes. <laughs> like 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 you cheated like you got something over on the world, you know? Like damn. Yeah. Um 
and I got it locked up. Like it's unlocked in my well, head. See, like I leveled up on one thing, you know? And I oh, think yeah. a lot of guys, as far as like creating their own books, I think a lot of veteran creators need to fucking give advice and fucking bring the new generation in. And in the same time, the new generation needs to fucking take that advice. I've had guys come to me with their first starter books and they've asked me my opinion. I'm like, okay, I'm not your mom and your dad. So I'm going to give you my opinion and I'm give them my opinion and they get ass hurt over it. And I'm like, okay, <laughs> I've been doing this for 21 years. I've worked for a lot of people. Take my opinion or don't. It means nothing to me if you do or don't, but I'm just trying to help you. I had guys that, that took me under their wing and told me how bad I sucked and made me want to get better. And yeah. that's, you know, part of the process. So I think we need the guys that have been doing this for a long time to take the younger generation creators uh, and, and, and push them. And because and we're fucking the mainstream is garbage now. So we need this new wave of creation if yeah. we want to keep fucking telling funny book stories another fucking 50 years. Yep, yep. The, uh, really what I kind of compare this to is uh, what was my own personal favorite period of uh of comic books which was the indie scene of the 80s when you had my god there were so many publishers right uh this was the this was the year of, of uh era of the teenage mutant ninja turtles first comics eclipse Heavy metal. malibu Euro. oh yeah well the yeah the, the, the yeah, Euro. <laughs> yeah. metal or launch that was in the seven that was in the 70s man but i mean every yeah. you know every wave of 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 comics that kind of shook things up uh you know like uh like heavy metal you know which introduced people like me to uh french comics and how awesome they are mm -hmm. or even before that i remember the head shop comics that were just like you know <laughs> like when you're a kid and you read r crumb it's just like you didn't know that you could do that right mm -hmm. and then you come to realize that you can do anything in this medium and that the only uh, restrictions are the ones that are imposed by your imagination or your lack thereof. Yeah. And you you, you got to just keep going and fail. There's no other way to learn from failing. And even that's from, that's from science. Like I was talking about earlier, you have to learn, you have to fail to learn from those things. You will not, you can't go in like the, the average human can't just go in and learn something. They have to keep failing at Dude, it and taking I notes. And learning from it, you know. Both Gabriel and his sister Ava, I taught them from day one. The best way to be a good winner is to know how to be a good loser. Word, yeah. right? Absolutely. Yeah. Exactly. And, and you know, that's the thing I always say about humble pie. It tastes like shit, right? <laughs> it tastes like shit, but it's nutritious. It's good for you. It's good nutrients. <laughs> yeah, no, it is. It is. It is. And, you guys really uh, captured his uh, likeness on the on the heart one where he's fucking up a Dahmer. Really looks like him <laughs> in the yeah, face. It does, uh, yeah, it does actually. Oh, Gearball nice cover. Uh, yeah. yeah, yeah. This one right here. This is the one that you want, folks. This is the one that I backed. Yes, please back that one, guys. Again, that one's special to me. Again, it's Gabriel Nice first, uh, you know, cover we've jammed on. He's been doing this shit for ten years as a published artist, as a soon-to-be twenty-two-year-old kid. Uh, he came in as an ink assistant for me, helping me hit deadlines. And, uh, you know, so this is our very first cover to jam on together. Uh, and again, when I told him, I, you know, hey, you want to do this cover with me? And I'm, I'm doing it, you know, for heart uh, purely. As, and he knew who he was. He was like, fuck, yeah. And so, again, my my desire to do this was to totally help heart out and to show respect to the guy that's did some of the my favorite chaos comics back in the day and worked yeah. for glenn danzig and did a lot of cool shit that fucking right. paved the way he was one of the original fucking guys like i said guys that like fucking dealt with shit that you know we deal with now on a different level digitally we'll say you know what i mean yeah. he, he fucking made his fucking you know marvel comics shit and you know marvel comics can die and image must die books and they're fucking funny as shit you know what i mean yeah. Yes. Yeah, unfortunately, some people don't have a sense of humor about themselves. Yep. You know, and get get easily butt hurt. But you know, fuck those people. Yep. People see uh, yes, guys. It's fun, man. Not take everything so yeah, fucking man. serious. You know. I know. I know. I know. It's it's. <laughs> what are you gonna do? There's <laughs> what, there's always gonna be those people. There's always gonna be those folks, right? Like in the eighties, you know, what pissed me off about the Republicans was what a hard on they had for censorship. 
Yeah. Right. Yeah. And now it's coming from like <laughs> what passes for the left in our yeah. country. It's just like, God damn it. Doesn't anybody like, believe whoa, in whoa. <laughs> Yeah. It's Both just like, different. does yeah, anybody b- believe in like free in the first amendment? I'm like, I, like I'm starting to, to despair. I'm starting to think that like, maybe it's only 15, 20% of us. Maybe. I mean, I don't know, man. I don't know. Uh, but right now, of course, you know, it's these, SJ, you know, these SJW freaks <laughs> who are, uh, who are uh, you know, uh, policing uh, all media and looking for anything that's objectionable. And, gee, I can't imagine why they would find something like this objectionable. <laughs> See, I'm not one to give a fuck about all that type of shit. I mean, I don't no. really. If somebody's, if somebody's cyberbullying or talking shit about me online, I just fucking sign off and boom, the problem went away. I don't fucking care. You know what I mean? Yup. Uh, I'm kind of old school. You got a fucking problem, mate. Come to me at a show and, and say it to my fucking face. Uh, come to my front yard, and I dare you to say it to my face then. <laughs> um, but all this bullshit, it's just fucking, it's online. Yes. It's this. I mean, who gives a fuck if people don't like you or don't like what you created? Who cares if somebody with fucking weird colored hair doesn't like, you know, you don't like my shit? I'm sorry. I'm going to keep fucking drawing it. You know, I want everybody to like it, but if you don't fuck off, I don't give a shit. Yeah. Well, dude, that's, a, so. that's the thing is we put our stuff out there and, and we hope that people get some, some joy, some pleasure out yep. of it. Hope that people like it. You know what I mean? Uh, you know, uh, when people told me that like they've been touched by my work, I just, you know, that's like, uh, you know, uh, um, such a, 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 a major blessing to me. And I'm just, and I'm just so damn grateful for it. But uh, you know, not everybody, uh, you know, uh, is, is as appreciative uh, of their of of their fans. But we know you hook your fans up well because you hook pops up like a like a mofo. Well, again, I, you know, I, I didn't tell you all the story about Kyle to, to brag. I told you the story just to kind of illustrate that him and a few other guys. Are, are, are the reasons that I was taught to be the way I am. You know what and I mean? Look, right. Guys, I wasn't a promoter. I wasn't out here, you know, um, pushing people's books or anything back when Andrew hooked me up like that. I was just a fan who had bought some stuff from him, you know, and he fucking hooked me up, dude. I didn't have no Facebook group. I didn't have no YouTube channel. I didn't have no shows. I didn't have nothing. I was just a fan who bought some stuff from Andrew and he fucking hooked me up. That's awesome. And, you know, damn, dude, that's five years ago. I mean, like I had, a, I had this, I did, I've done a bunch of evil learning covers and I had uh, this kid and his family came up to me at a F- Dallas fan expo and he brought uh, an Arthur Sudam uh, Ernie cover you know, and, and, and he asked me if I would sign it because he just knew that I was an evil learning artist. And I, I looked at the kid, and he was probably 16, 15-ish, you know, mom and dad with him, little sister. And um, I was like, well, this isn't one of my covers. And he he was kind of embarrassed and sad and you know, he wanted to get evil learning signed. And I was like, well, let me, let me see it real quick. And I go, I'm, I'm going to go, I'm going to do something. To just don't tell Arthur about it. And and they kind of laughed, and I honestly don't think they knew who Arthur was. They just picked up an Evil Ernie comic. Right. Um, and so then I, I started remarking it, and I drew a real quick sketch of Ernie with his hair and everything, and the kid was like, you know, his jaw dropped, and, and I was like, there, now it's my cover. And uh, the dad nice. was like, what do I owe you for that? And I was like, you don't Genius. owe me shit. I go, you already paid for tickets and parking and you took time to come find me over here to get an autograph. And I just want your kid to have a good experience, you know? Hell yeah. Hell yeah. And, and especially when you see kids at cons, cause you're thinking like, damn, yep. there's, there's the next generation of fans. Yeah, exactly. Yep. Gotta right. Hook them, guys got to hook them. <laughs> yeah, no, no, absolutely. I remember uh, this was at, I think the East coast comic con this kid comes up and he's like checking out my table and he's just like, oh, I'm just like, you know, kids get free comics, right? And he's like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I hooked up with some free comics. Once again, not the virtue signal, but and I was just like, oh, it's like a kid, you know? And it wasn't like a really young kid. I, you know, my, my, my book is like, I would say like 13 and up or something like that. 
right? But he was about that age, you know, where I could give him, uh, you know, a funny book that has like a little violence and and uh, and and, uh, and a little cuss- cussing. Because holy, you know, I mean, I remember going to uh, my LCS uh, one year and seeing it packed with kids, and my heart just soared. It then came crashing to the ground when I realized they were there for Pokemon cards <laughs> and not comics, <laughs> right? But all, I mean, we, we I, like I, I would say, if not all of us, most of us, uh, our memories of reading comics as kids are like precious to us, and we kind of, you know, uh, it's. Well, look, at least kids are reading manga, which means they're at least they're reading comic books, because. You know, uh, and eventually, hopefully, now that they're familiar with the medium, they'll discover American comics and French comics and and uh, everything in between. Uh, but uh, right now, the uh, the mainstream ain't doing nothing but turning turning out trash. And all the energy, all the passion projects, all the cool uh, fly shit is uh, is here. <laughs> it's a, it's in the underground. Yeah. Uh, Hey, um, while we have you on here, uh, Andrew, I wanted to know your thoughts on AI art. <laughs> Hold on. Oh shit! Oh shit! Hold on. All right, you yeah, you just unleashed the beast. Let me let me go get something to drink real quick. Hold up! Hold up! I'm, uh, hold up! Hold up! Let me let me let me just. Yeah, I'm just gonna you know probably sit that one out. <laughs> Okay, so my I actually made a post about it earlier on Facebook and, and deleted it because my spelling was shit. And so my son, you know, I was like, Dad, before you make a post, you need to make sure you spell things properly. Um, I kind of got a strong opinion about it. Um, I don't give a shit. Um, the way I see it, the only artist that in my, and this is just my opinion, and that's like assholes, everybody has one. Uh, the only artist that I, I kind of see being threatened by AI art are the one trick pony artists, the guys that all paint the same digitally. They all know how to paint a pretty pinup slash cover. They're all exclusive store cover artists and they're all threatened that, you know, AI can, you know, take somebody's photo and, and, and put it on a mocked up, you know, fucking drawing. I uh, make it look digitally painted from what I've seen of this. And everybody's all ass hurt over it. The guys that I know that really draw comic books, draw sequentials, draw covers, they don't give a fuck because I don't think that a computer could ever do that. I don't think he could ever lay down uh, creative panel work and the you know the the personal feel that a human brain could do. You know. So I'm not threatened by it. It doesn't bother me the least bit. Again, it just seems like the guys that are the people that are threatened by it, in my opinion, are the people that I see all kind of paint the same. All they all draw the same, you know, uh, you know, like I said, like just bust up cover shots and they're real pretty. They're real nice looking covers, but it's realistic shit and it all looks the same to me. I don't buy yeah. comic books to see that stuff. I want to see tradition i want to see comic book art you know what i mean yeah uh, so it, it honestly doesn't bother me i promote too many artists to promote somebody that types keywords into an app <laughs> yeah i okay i i, I don't my, yeah, i don't give a shit about it because it doesn't affect me you know uh people are getting uh, emotional about it because you know from what i understand that you pay eight dollars or something to get your face dubbed on all these fucking like computer rendering shots of, of you. Uh, and a lot of creators are getting upset that, you know, well, you're not spending $8 on me. Well, quit whining like a little bitch and draw cool stuff to make people want your shit over this computer artwork. Hell yeah. yeah. Hell yeah. I mean, look, the AI art, I think it looks like the, really the best thing I could, best thing I could say about it is that it's interesting. And I think it looks great. <laughs> Well, I mean, um, it's 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 interesting, you know. I mean, it's it's, awesome. but I mean, but then again, like, who wants to hear that their stuff is interesting? Yeah, right. No, I, think, yeah. I get the thing that looks interesting, but again, it looks like everybody. It looks like, you know, it's like that that guy, uh, um, Art Germ. Yeah. Okay. Everybody seems to 
paint like art drum. And that's all I see is fucking photorealistic digital paintings. And none of these fucking artists, I, I've never seen any of them draw sequentials. I've never yeah. seen any of them draw pages. They've never earned their due. They've never oh, fucking different. paid their due drawing pages. You know, you're not yeah. a fucking real comic book artist. I'm sorry. Uh, you're you're a pinup artist. You're a cover pin-up artist. artist. You're, you're, yeah. you're, you're Mike That's Brooks. Oh. Oh, <laughs> I think that the stuff looks beautiful. It's immaculate. Right. But, I'm, but I fucking hate it. And I'm 100% anti-AI uh, uh, art. But it looks gorgeous. It looks great. And it's getting smarter yeah. and smarter and smarter. It, it's, and forgive me if y'all are, are for them, but they're kind of like Marvel movies for me. Yeah, they're great. Oh, yeah. They look flashy. They they got fucking <laughs> yeah. big graphics. They, yeah. they look, but yeah. the, it's they're boring to me. Yeah, yeah. me too. Yeah, yeah. Me too. I heard that and, that the only people it's really gonna hit hard in the get like right from the get is the um, concept artists because you just type in you know I want you know uh, the, the the artist that you want and the subject that you want and it puts it out quick like pretty quick and then you pick yeah, out but, the hard part is picking out the images you want you know. You see the one that not- they're doing with like uh, I forgot which Batman they picked, and then uh, Akira, uh, you know the the, the director, uh, Koza, I forgot how to pronounce Kurosawa? his name. Yeah, so they did that with yeah. Batman. And it was black and white, like street level, like realistic imagery, and everything looked immaculate. I think your boy it's Zach just- was posting it up on on YouTube on his uh, community feed. But it's Batman just- had two symbols, so there's always something where it contorts. Like they'll do a Conan, like an old man Conan one or something, and his right. his hand will be twisted backwards like right right, right. On, like there's always something demonically off about the page because it's a I, right, right, right. i'm just i'm not that big on a lot of like tech um and i yeah i've had this debate with people at shows and again uh friends with bernie wrights and, and and many of oh. beers and, and coffee with with that gentleman nice. and yeah. you know you you talk to somebody like bernie oh. and you look at the beautiful work he did oh. and People are like, well, don't you think, don't you think Bernie would do uh, use computers to help him with his artwork? No, I, I don't think he would. He was. Um, <laughs> part of, part, you didn't need part no of, damn art, computer. Jeez. Part part of artwork is it's kind of. I love I love to see the imperfections. Yes. I love to see the fact that not everything is fucking perfect. There's yes. one particular. There's one particular artist who I love. I'm friends with this guy. I won't say his name. Um, mm-hmm. Amazing fucking artist brilliant penciler. He can ink his own work. Uh, and, and he, for the most part, has always worked with an inker. At one point, he quit using an inker and he he inked himself uh, by drawing digitally to speed it up and to honestly collect a bigger paycheck. Right. And I didn't like it because it looked so stiff. The backgrounds look stiff. You can tell he used you know, uh, software to lay out the buildings and the architecture and his structures, his figures, just they lost some of the life in them. Yeah. And Bullet. he asked me, yeah. what do you think of this story? And I'm like, eh, I'm not fucking big on it, dude. And he just kind of like looked at me and I'm like, well, I, I just like fucking old school artwork. I love to see the imperfections in artwork. I don't want everything to be fucking perfect. No, you know, no. I mean? That's the fun of it, you know, uh, Neil you Adams know, I- was saying something about that, right? Yeah. Yeah. Neil Adams yeah. said that, um, that style is everything that an artist does wrong. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> right. And I've always liked, I mean, look, you, you'll get somebody like George Perez, who was, you know, a legend, not, not my style. Do you know what I mean? I was never a big fan of his work because it was too clean for me. I, I understand the, the why people. <laughs> yeah. No, I mean, dude, I'm not, I'm not taking anything oh, no, away no, no. from that guy. Right. <laughs> but yeah, in terms opinion, anyway. of uh, taste, yeah, uh, I I like to see the human hand, you know, yeah, uh, and um, or somebody like Timothy Truman, for instance. Like he sometimes gets his proportions off yeah. a little bit, you know what I mean? His limbs are a little too straight, that kind of a thing. One of my favorite artists, or somebody like uh, like Mike Plug, for instance. Like I could say that like the best artist when it came to horror. I mean Bernie. Like I said, Bernie. everybody else yeah. is yeah. in his shadow. But my favorite, Plug. Mm, okay, right. And there's Corbin. So he did some. He did some tweaking. Oh, Corbin's dope too. You know? yeah. And he was yeah. ahead of the Kyle, game. And yeah. Kyle has Kyle has moved into close to Bernie phase with me. Yeah, oh yeah. Like yeah, I, yeah. I told Kyle recently, oh, I'm like, dude, your work. Like I texted him a couple of days ago. I was like, dude, your work is just fucking beautiful. You're one of the modern masters 
yes. in comic books now. Yes. Oh, you yeah. know what I mean? And he he totally tips his hat to Kelly. And I'm like, dude, I'm sorry. You know, you have, uh, uh, you yeah, know, I love Kelly Jones. I love me some Kelly, but I love me some Kelly Kyle's too, man. Just, oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. someone He's, put it, I read it somewhere online about him. Someone said he went to fucking Mordor and came back, a different artist. Like something happened. <laughs> so they said, I'm like, okay, <laughs> that makes sense. Like, like, cause I mean, he's just on this, like this whole other level for me now. Like, yes. looking at him, you know, like yes. he's, him and Bisley are like my two main influences right now. And that's yes. like, that's all I'm looking at. See, yeah, straight yeah. Up. I really, I really fucking grew to love Simon's work. The older I've gotten, yeah, uh, me too. Me too. when I was younger, I was, I was, I, I, I was wooed by the, by the image founders. So everything was image, you know, like that. If you don't draw like that, you suck, you know? And so you'd see some of Simon's wonky, uh, or <laughs> had too many beers drawings, yeah. you know what I mean? And you're like, okay, well the, you can tell he was fucking drunk when he drew that page. Um, <laughs> when I was younger, I'm like, eh, it's okay. You know, but now that I'm older, I look at the fucking freedom in his work yes. and the, the, the ability that man can paint masterfully oh, and yes. fucking pen and ink is, and he's just, he doesn't give a fuck. He just no. draws. Yes. I love that. Yes. And like another guy I'm real big on is, is Liam Sharp. Love Liam. Oh, Sharp. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Dude, yeah, yeah, that yeah. Batman detective fucking Celtic book he did. Oh man. Yeah. Dude. So good. And but yeah, like his wonder woman, when he, when he did his wonder woman yeah. series, I was like, you know, I love Liam's work. He, he's a dude artist. He's a fucking muscle dude artist. You know what I mean? Yeah. Death's head. Yeah, yeah, you know? yeah, yeah, sure, and I'm like, I'm like, he's fucking drawing Wonder Woman. What the fuck? <laughs> and then when I picked up the first issue, it was beautiful. Every yeah. fucking leaf and bark on the, on the tree. It was yeah, awesome. Dude. The shrubbery yeah. and the panel, the, 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 the gutter, the gutter work. Like all kinds of yep. stuff, like with him. He said, yeah. "It's just so it's so fun to look at." You know what I mean? And, he, and see, so everything that y'all are talking about, like the fun shit, a computer yeah. will never produce that. Thank no, you. No, I don't Thank think you. so. I just think um, I don't know. I just have to go. I have to be a hard no on it for even just because just my gut says no. And I guess it sounds very stupid of me to say that, but I'm I have no. to go. And anti- you can't and you can't you can't buy original artwork from a computer at a fucking show. You can't nope. get a sketch from a computer at a show or a fucking autograph from one of these fucking hack artists. You know what I mean? I so, think and, I think selling point one day. Keywords can give me an autograph. <laughs> well, look, I think that the people th- the, who believe that AR, AI art is going to replace human artists, you know, like uh, somebody with a soul, are the people who also think that well, like no a soul. room full of monkeys will create, uh, you know, uh, create the uh, complete works of uh, William Shakespeare. You know, you've heard that old straw right. man. Was it? Yeah, like a room full of monkeys, like uh, uh, on typewriters. Eventually, they'll create the comp- complete works of William, William Shakespeare. Bullshit. Bullshit. But I will say, <laughs> it might be a selling point one day. Like you might have a cert on there. Say if you're finding a book or making some like human made certification. Well, certified human wrote made. This. You know what I mean? Um, I don't think it's gonna really fuck with us in our lifetime, though. No. But no, I, I've been no wrong. Way. But I think, <laughs> like I heard, like even your boy was saying that Zach. He was saying this would be great for people that are trying to bang out a bunch of books before they die, and they need conceptual layouts for the worlds that they're trying to establish visually but, and they can look at that and redraw it i get that but it's like i, I mean again i don't but you look at like the, well, I but, you look at the con- but you look at the concept drawings from like i'm a big fan of concept drawings from, oh i love concept uh, every i just from, love concept uh, art it's awesome dude movies right like yeah. something like uh like this right here love that shit what you got there right oh alien okay so you right. got some, you got some Mobius in there, and I got Ju- some Ju- Mobius in Jule- here. Jule, 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 Sorry, pardon my French. No, that's okay. <laughs> that is French too. <laughs> my, French, my French pronunciation uh, leaves a lot to be desired. You know why? Because French people don't make horror movies. That's why. Well, I mean, there was one. Jean, they make them some horror. Com- they make them horror. They make them them comics though. Yeah, they sure do, man. You and know they treat me, their I'm, artists I'm, like rock stars over there. Yup. Yeah, because uh, believe it or not, uh, uh, comic book artists in France are actually considered <gasps> real artists. Mm. But yeah, look, I mean, but that's because you know? they're really drawing. <laughs> yeah, man. I'm trying to I'm like find, look I'm at that. To find like the you could stuff specifically. Some of course, art, dude. Everybody knows the Giger oh. stuff, right? Yeah, everybody Giger. knows the Giger stuff. <laughs> Gig, but, the but the... metal. Yeah, but the uh, all the human stuff, like the uh, especially the uh, spacesuits, are uh, clearly uh, Mobius's uh, 
designs. And what I'm saying is, is you're never going to get a Drule or a Mobius out of a fucking computer. Right? Well, dude, I mean, I don't yeah. know, brother. <laughs> to be, I don't know. To be honest with you, there's shit that's just coming out, like, like in a year. Just wait till you see the shit that's coming out. And I, I, I'm, I'm being honest with you. Um, well, I hear you. I hear that, you. This is this is what's going to get hit hardest. Is the is the conceptual artists that you know, comic art. I don't know because of the the the, the sequentials. It's going to be a little harder to do that. But don't don't quote me on it. But well, I'm thinking also of like something like a movie like Conan the Barbarian, right? How you yeah. had uh, the, uh, uh, Ron Cobb was like the main designer on that, yeah, and created that look of Robert E. Howard's Hyboria. So good, Perfect. right? Uh, in other in other words, every artist has their own flavor, and I don't see AI art having that kind of individuality, right? It's I don't weird see too, it. Though. Like yeah. in, in the programs, you pick out like multiple artists and a topic, and then it generates that. So it's like I want David Finch and Simon Bisley with um, then you'll put in like Conan the Barbarian, realistic. RJ RJ did the Six Gun Gorilla that looked that, that looked that was no, pretty startling. I'm not gonna sit there and say it looks bad, dude. It looks fucking brilliant, you know what I mean? But it just I'm anti it. Like fuck that. <laughs> I'm just like I'm anti well, like it's... dude. Like I, like they're not. I don't want I don't want them taking Where's over the soul, everything. Where's the soul, dude? Where's the There's soul? No soul. That's what... like singularity, it's... brother. Like I'm sorry, it's coming. I mean, it might not be in our life. <laughs> but... Oh, know. dude, uh, we're definitely living in clown world. That's 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 for damn sure. <laughs> but, you, but you know what? Thank God we've got great artists still and yeah. great art to help us we're through good. the through the through the uh, brutal end times. <laughs> this uh, world, guys, yeah, guys, these are going to be around a lot longer than computers are. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and you know, and you know what? It's just like when I'm working with an artist, I don't care if they use a computer. I just don't want to see it. All right, you know, right. like once again, know. it's like CGI. If I if I if, if I don't notice that it's there, yeah, no, I hear then you. It's, no, uh, no. Then, <laughs> the then, then it's guilty Yeah, man. yeah, man. Uh, anyway, uh, we should be, uh, I think, bringing this. Uh, we should be wrapping wrapping this up. Me thinks uh, Andrew has been a champ hanging out even though he's feeling uh un under the weather uh actually you know what like well first let's take another look at that campaign yeah thanks for coming out andrew and uh thanks for um no problem yes answer, thank you my question i figured i had you on and i'd like to know your. Uh, i'm not that. i'm not sorry dude you can ask me whatever you want i don't give a shit oh, yeah. <laughs> that's that's a big conversation right now like that's a hot hot fucking topic right now yeah you can oh, you can ask Pop. I'm not, I'll talk about whatever fucking topic y'all want to talk about. I'm yeah. uh, you're you, you are our kind of dude, sir. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So everybody, go check this out. Uh, Look, def nobody def is you, talking you about this book. Nobody. Well, back they will when be. this shit first happened. Hart Fisher was all over talk show. He was on Sally yeah. Jesse. He was on Jerry Springer. He was he was booked to go on on Donahue, but he destroyed Sally Jesse. So Phil, chicken is chicken oh, Phil, out. you pussy. Yeah, but Man, I'm just saying China. it's like now nobody will talk about this right. guy at all, and he was wronged by that Netflix series. He really was. They misappropriated his fucking comic book covers and and put their actor on the cover instead of the Dahmer art that that heart had on there right i mean they fucked it up dudes um this dude deserves just like i said just just on his body of work he deserves the support and to without be without a doubt you know? without a doubt without a without a doubt but... and go check out american horrors channel on roku oh is that uh is that that's hearts that's oh, is it like really? Hearts Channel. Yeah. yeah. How did I yeah. not know that? I got to get a Roku. That sounds like fun. <laughs> I, got, I got one. Wait, hold on. The hold same on guy second. who built Hearts is building ours. I'm oh, just, I just saying. Got, I, just, I got a. I got, what is that again? Huh? What's it called? American it? Horrors. American Horrors. American Horrors Network. It's not the show. Right. It's when not you when you when you pull up American Horrors on online, you'll get the show, not the Roku network. You want right, to go right, to right. Roku? Well, you're thinking of American Horror Story. This is American. Yeah. Horror? You, yeah. Make sure you go to Roku and look it up, and you know, like you said, make sure you get past the show because search. And it's old school channel, Brian. Like like they play like they play things randomly, 
So you go in there, you just watch it for what it is. It's like the old school, yep. like oh, the old school cool. network. You know what I mean? They're going to have oh, that's... different commercials and things like oh, that. Man. And um, yeah, I, I, yeah, right I, I, I don't have a Roku, man. but it sounds like fun. So I can watch my kids go to bed. I, I have one that I bought for my mom uh, because like she was having trouble, you know, with the, with the dimension, everything was having trouble, like with the controls, you know, on like the, on the cable. So I got a Roku because it has like literally four buttons. Uh, but uh, yeah, so I still, I still have that. So I can, I can watch it through that for sure. Yeah. And watch out real soon. You're going to see the madness comic network over there too. Oh shit. Yeah. Be pretty sick. Anyway, doing. anyway, uh, real, real quick, uh, Andrew, uh, tell these fine folks where they can find you. Uh, guys, you can find me uh, on Facebook. I'm, I'm a real simple person. Just you know, Facebook, Andrew Mangum Art. Uh, look me up on Facebook. Uh, I run my Andrew Mangum Art page. Gabriel does also. He helps me out because I don't know shit about technology. So um, <laughs> I either respond or Gabriel responds. Uh, but I'm also on Facebook. Uh, I don't really do any of the other stuff. Um, so that's, that's about so it. Um, All right, man. I, I think we're we are the lucky we are the lucky group that gets Andrew to come out online once in a while and talk. No to shit. <laughs> no shit. This dude's awesome, pops. Um, he's he's come out to, to our show a couple times. Um, but like I said, I've known him since before I had a show, guys. Good dude. <laughs> Back what he does, back when all these guys do, you know what's up. Yeah. Check I, I, need, I, I need all you guys also to, like I said, go look up Kyle's book, uh, Mosaic. Oh, yeah. yeah, I see it right here. I, I have it on, um, on, uh, sorry, eBay. You can get the graphic novel, very nice, uh, for five dollars. Um, uh, four dollars shipping. Get it. Sold. Uh, you get can get, sold. Um, I wrote it. I got it written you can get down. The, the, the five issue breakdown. <laughs> Uh, set for eight ninety nine plus seven ninety nine shipping, and there's a multitude it's of different. Amazing! Uh, I, just I do not eBay, I'm but get if it one of you sure. would grab that for me, I would pay you for it. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, it. It might be on. Uh, on. I was gonna um, look on Amazon. I'm gonna look Amazon on Amazon too. too. Yeah, like you know, I highly eBay. recommend. Like I said, that's one of the books, and Kyle's one of the artists that helped get me through cancer. So, you yeah. know, that's what artists for, beautiful. brother. That's what art is for. Uh, and hey, so I'm also going to pimp out my son again. Uh, you ought to need to get him on a cover for your book. Oh, dude, without a doubt. Without a doubt. As soon as I can afford it. <laughs> yeah, man. I showed you guys. He did that Bushy Boop, the gorilla on the Bushy yes, Boop awesome. cover. And uh, Passion is the book that him and, him and you are both working on. Right, Andrew? No, Passion is all yeah. Gabriel's book. Okay. Gabriel will have our... Uh, this is Gabriel's preview book for his book that's going to launch uh, on Indiegogo next year. Uh, oh, we're, we're not doing this. We're not doing our creator on books the way other people do them. We are paying and producing our books first and then launching the campaigns. Oh, best way so, to do it. That's the best, best way, way to do, do it. it. That's oh, the best and, way to do it. You know, people, uh, love, people will love that, dude. Oh, yeah. And build then it. this is so. This is a wraparound cover for my book. Oh, it's dope. What's your book, yeah, man? What's is. your book called? I like that. Yeah, man. Fucking badass. What, what's your book? Oh, called, man. man. Oh, we. Oh. I like that. So. Yeah, uh, Andrew, what book is that? <laughs> uh, I'll, I'll, you let you say it <laughs> I'll, I'll let news out on it in January. This is something I created okay. in high school. Yeah. And, All right. uh, it's something I've been holding on to for fucking a long time. And like I said, I'm still doing, I do covers for uh, Dynamite Entertainment. I got a cover on new uh, Alice Cooper comics and what? I'm doing covers for, for Merck Publishing. Uh, so I'm doing covers for those guys and Death Rage just came out today from Merck Publishing. Oh, that's dope. Oh, oh that yeah. looks awesome. Yeah. I got, I got one more thing. You got to. I got to show one more thing. Talking about heavy metal, man. Know, I got to yeah. see if Andrew knows what this is. Oh, that's a Crazy. book I drew. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's dope. <laughs> that's oh, a book did, I you, drew. did you read that, pops? Huh? Did you read through that? Oh yes, I love this dude. Yeah, yeah, that's bad, I dude. Love that's his wraparound cover. I I was man, I was so torn because um Gabriel had a cover on this book too. 
and I had to choose between father and son, which oh, man. I was going to get. That's and never the pretty. wraparound was just badass, so dad won. Yeah. Yeah. But then the next time I saw Gabriel Cover pop up on Bushy Boo, I was like, all right, I got the father-son team in the house now. Yeah. 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 You know? That's um, awesome. Yeah. That's I forgot awesome. about this, or I would have had it out. I had to go dig that out real fast. <laughs> Thank you, Pops. Matt, tell hey, me. Guys. Go ahead. Tell- uh, oh. Matt, tell these, tell, tell these, uh, uh, um, wait, hold on a sec. Uh, Andrew, just hang out for a second so we can just hit you up in the, in the uh, back room. Yeah. If that's cool. Okay. Anyway, All right. My phone's getting ready to die. So let's, oh, know, okay. All right. I'm, All right. I'm, 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 I'm left. Okay. All right. <laughs> if, if you just disappear, we'll, we'll, we'll yeah. understand. But we're just, just, yeah. just about to sign off. Uh, Matt, where can these fools find you? You guys can find me at Room Cutter Comic on Twitter or YouTube. Uh, it's Metal Movies and Brutus. <laughs> If you guys want, go to butchcleaver.com. You can pick up my book. It's a part one or part two. It's about a butcher gets killed. He's brought back to life by a voodoo curse, and that curse gives him the power to weaponize bone on a molecular level. Check it out if you want. Thanks, folks. Yep. Hell yeah. As always, people, thank you so much. Smash that like button and the subscribe and the, the ding 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 dong the little bell. Uh, tickle the al- algorithm's ass with a feather for us if you can. <laughs> anyway, folks, we will talk to you next week. Peace and love. And, of course, always.